The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect those of the Barber's Chat Network, our great partners at HMB Media, or any of our media peers. We're just five idiots who love sports and love to talk shit. If you're offended easily, then this show isn't for you. And for those of you who aren't offended easily, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Remember, it's only entertainment. Before we start the show, we want to thank our sponsors, Pillars. Pillars is the best clothing line in the Chicagoland area. If you're looking for a dope hoodie, a sweatsuit, shirts, shoes, or even stuff for your kids, Pillars is where you should go. You can visit any of their four store locations in the Chicagoland area or visit PillarsClub.co and order online. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. After a long two-week hiatus, we are back on the air. It is I'm Not Gonna Hold You. And, of course, I'm your, I'm your host, Scott. You know to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Barbchair Scott. Follow the Barber's Chair Network at, at Barber's Chair Net. On Twitter and Instagram, follow h and Media at h and Media TV on Twitter and h and Media on Instagram. And, of course, get in tune with our partners at Pillars at Pillars club.co and of course visit them on instagram at pillars underscore club or visit any of their three uh store locations in the chicago land area man it is monday april 8th 2024 we've got a pack show for y'all man uh sorry about the two week uh break had a lot of stuff i had to take care of man but we are back rocking with y'all uh, as we get ready for the last week in the NBA season uh heading into that is next week will be the play in we got the playoffs shortly after that two weeks away from the NBA, not from the NBA, but from the NFL draft. Thank God. If you've been following our show, if you've been listening to all this draft coverage we've been having, we're pretty happy that this is coming to an end, man. Of course, we're going to be getting to a whole bunch of things. We've got Courtney joining us later in the show to talk some baseball on the hot corner. We've got the homie Larry Legend will be joining us with Respect the Culture each and every week on this show. We'll be going talking about that J. Cole Kendrick thing, man. Looks like Cole went out sad. So we're definitely going to be talking about that. The homie Pavy will be joining us in just a minute for weekend in the association. Uh, Mikey will not be joining us. Had some technical difficulties, man, but he will be joining us uh, later on in a couple weeks. He's got some stuff he's taking care of too, but we will all be together very, very soon with everybody on there. We appreciate everybody watching, everybody tuned in on YouTube, on Twitter, uh, everywhere that you're watching uh, right now, man. So we appreciate y'all. Uh, I want to start this with my sound off before I bring in the rest of the crew. Oh, uh, man, amazing big weekend this past weekend in entertainment and sports. Uh, man, uh, we got to start off with a saluting uh, South Carolina for winning their third championship uh, with uh, Coach Dawn Staley. And just the, the amazing run that they've had being there, uh, in their, their undefeated season. Um, and just dominating this entire season, man. Also got to give some big love to, you know, Iowa. You got to give some love to UConn and everything they've did this past weekend with the big numbers they've had. The streaming numbers for women's basketball this week were crazy. In fact, the UConn and Iowa game on Friday is the most watched basketball game in ESPN history at 14.2 million viewers. And that's on a Friday night. That's usually a night where people go out and enjoy themselves with people watching that big uh, game going on on Friday night. So definitely got to salute them. Don Staley is the first black coach in NCAA history to win three NCAA titles. And they went 38-0 this week. So you definitely got to show love to them. I love the love she showed Caitlin Clark in her post game. Um, definitely going to get into that. I feel like there was a lot of hate with Caitlin this past weekend. Uh, so we're going to get into that in a minute, but definitely got to show love to her and just everything that the ladies did for a guy like me, who 
I find that Detroit doesn't get through the NBA, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I completely don't know anything about what's going on with male uh, with, with the men's uh, college basketball. In fact, I had to be reminded that tonight was the national championship. I was wondering why there wasn't any NBA games on the schedule. And I'm not going to lie, I haven't watched that many of these games, but I've watched more I've watched more women's games this year than I've watched any of those. And to see just everything that they've done and to have people who are casual watchers like myself even know you know who these ladies are, who the players are, and what the actual teams were involved in this is is a far cry, and it show it shows just really the growth of the entire uh, thing they've got going on, and this is going to continue right into the WNBA with uh, you know Caitlin Clark getting drafted, and Reese just announced she's going to be going to the draft. So big shout out to them. Also, stuff that went on this weekend, uh, WrestleMania forty one. That was uh, one thing about me. I used to be a massive diehard wrestling fan when I was. A kid in the, in the early teens, man. Now I just, you know, I'm a casual watch. I pop in. I'm 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 a WrestleMania watcher, nigga. Like, you know, I watch, you know, the build up towards Mania. I watch the Raw after Mania, like tonight. And he probably won't see me against maybe Survivor Series. But I thought it was a, a real good show, very entertaining show. Uh, I am a, a, a the Rock stand to see just his influence on everything these past couple months leading up to this big storyline. Was, was incredible. Incredible match with Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes finally finished the story. They did the little Bret Hart, correct me if I'm wrong, bang, WrestleMania 10 moment uh, with ringing everybody uh, together with, with at the end with him hosting the championship belt up. Uh, the, the Hall of Fame was great. I loved Paul Heyman's speech. And they had 145,000 people in two nights uh, in Philadelphia over there at the link, which was big. And I was also thinking as a guy who, you know, really watched heavy during the Attitude Era, if they had two-night WrestleManias back in the day, that joint would have been easily $200. And I wouldn't have been able to see it because we definitely wasn't going to be paying the five back then. But that was just a big, incredible moment for that. And just to see, like, in the match with all the old school guys come back, Force Rock, Undertaker, Cena, and just all the different things. Snoop Dogg has the best life in America. Like, he Snoop gets paid to be everywhere. He was all over that thing, so that was a good thing. And, of course, the series finale of Kirby Enthusiasm this is, was this week. So I definitely got to give my hats off to them. As you can see, I got the, the hat on right now. Uh, for 24 years, 12 seasons, in my opinion, funniest sitcom of all time. So definitely a big, big week. So I want to shout out to everybody who did something big in entertainment this week, man. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat room right now. Yes, we are back. Uh, shout out to everybody uh, tuning in. But let's bring in Pavy. Uh, let's bring in the entire crew as we get ready to start the show. We might be a little slow today. This is like, you know, we, we ain't done this a couple weeks. And, and as you can look at my face, look like we all tired. I did not get a lot of sleep last night. Uh, and like at all. <laughs> and, and we can tell Bane to get a lot of sleep. Man, yeah, I ain't get no sleep at all, friend. I went from WrestleMania to J. Cole. Y- yes, and we and we, we were getting to that. And, and so, ass nigga. <laughs> as Lero joins on the show, but uh, how y'all feeling? Oh, Pav, how you feeling, man? You were on mute, brother. Oh, there you go. I had you on mute. That's my fault. No, oh, I said, yeah. uh, I'm chilling, bro. I can't complain. Dante, how about you, bro? I'm solid, bro. Shout out to Don Staley. That was a great game. Uh, like you said, we're gonna get into the uh, the Catlin, the uh, Caitlin Clark dialogue because I do think it's interesting. Uh, something we could talk about, but uh, shout out to them. That was great. Um, the White Sox, you know, I I foolishly tried to tap back in, but that's all. I don't know why. I don't know why you did that. You see, I got a new hat on today. I'll probably just rotate hats <laughs> around, you know. Fuck it. <laughs> but uh nah, bro, I'm good. Atlanta, Atlanta treating me good. Hey, I got drafted by the Mariners in the second round on MLB the show. Oh, nigga, I thought you about to say real life. No, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bang as a uh, 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 underground baseball career that we didn't know about. Right. I mean, I played that shit, you know, when I was a shorty. But, yeah, MLB the show, man. Second, I should have got drafted in the first round, too. That's some bullshit. Now I'm down in Arkansas in double A. Them, them be the worst part. When you putting up mad numbers on MLB the, MLB the show and, and minor leagues, they still ain't called you up. Yeah, I'm like, what like, else I got to do? I got 80 home runs in two months. Call right, me I'm, up. I'm on, I'm on a 50-game 50 50 50 game game hitting streak. <laughs> <laughs> I just stole 60 bases. Call me up, man. Uh, shout out to Gustavo. He said, these guys have me listening to Electrical Electrician Podcast two weeks. We back. Yeah, we, we apologize for that, but we are That's back. That's nasty. Yeah, we, we apologize. Like, for, for, like, what, for y- what, y'all t- what they talk about on them podcasts? Right. <laughs> I hope you learn something, my nigga. Yeah, I hope you learn something. The OM podcast or some shit? <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
But let's get into it, man. Let's talk some basketball before we get to the NBA. I want to address the Caitlin Clark thing because I feel like there has been a lot of hate. Ain't no feel. I know there's been a lot of hate over these past couple weeks. Uh, really, just the entire season. But I feel like it really turned up this past weekend on the Twitter TL. Of course, we saw it down at Tarasi. Said I don't look at that as hate, hate more anything. That's just like an old head who you know wants to bring the. The young, uh, the young upstarts. I guess that is hate. It is hate, but it's hate that I can respect because she's so decorated. It's kind of like when Shaq talks about Dwight Howard or Shaq goes up there talking about averaging twenty eight and fifteen, like we don't, like we weren't alive when he played. Like I don't ever remember Shaq averaging twenty eight points and fifteen rebounds. Like to me, that's what it got to. But you know, Caitlin Clark is a, a special player when people are just bringing her down and they think there's a conspiracy to get her into the national championship game instead of her just being as great as she is. Now, with that call on Friday night that a lot of people got upset about, I get it. Was it a moving screen? Yes, it was. Do you call it? Probably not. I don't like calls. I don't like petty calls like that in, the, in you know, heat in the moments. I was somebody who didn't like the uh, roughing the quarterback call or the, the unnecessary roughness call on, on Patrick Mahomes two seasons ago in the AFC championship game. I didn't like that when I feel like you got to let that rock. But a foul is a foul, and that's pretty much what it is. I think what this is you're seeing as – I feel like this – and not that I have a problem with people hating a, a, a big-time player because that just comes with the territory, but I do feel like she is putting a major spotlight on this game. Now, I feel like if you're a South Carolina fan, I understand why you would probably be upset because maybe your team isn't getting the spotlight that you feel they deserve for going undefeated, winning their uh, third championship second in the last three years, you know, I, I get where this coming from, but I feel like there should be more love because she's putting a spotlight that wasn't there before. Is she doing it strictly by herself? No, but I feel like all the hate right now is unnecessary. Do I think that, you know, she's going to go into the league and dominate from day one? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. I, I, I don't watch too, too much to know to think that she'll go in here and win Benyama today, even though me and Pavi had a debate about that this weekend about, he said it took a month, but I think it took two weeks, but whatever, about him, his domination of the league. But I feel like a lot of this comes to a point where I feel like it's because it's a white woman being uh in this spotlight, and that's where I think it comes from, which I get. But I feel like we just need to appreciate it for what it is. Every person who is great at their craft coming into this league, or any league, is going to get hyped up. We, we see it with Caleb Williams. We, we, we've been doing this for months with Bears fans or other people saying he better be good. Y'all acting like he's this. We need to stop having what people say about these players take away from how they're actually playing and that's what i feel like i got from i feel like we need to be enjoying what she's bringing and bringing these new eyes to the game and making the game bigger and bigger than what it actually is pat what you think about you know the the you know the hate that we've been seeing from caitlin clark i mean i disagree with the i don't think she gets hated on i don't think she her gets hated on i think that people hate the discourse surrounding her um and i think that obviously we live in america when whenever there's a black and white thing um, people choose sides. Like even the LSU Iowa game at, at like one point in time turned into like a whole race war. It was like, wow, I saw people tweeting like, granted, it's Twitter and everything is over centralized. But it was like, well, like how could you be a black man and root for Iowa? Because Kaylin Clark Cole, bro, and I just like watching them play basketball. But like, I think that people just hated the discourse that comes from her. Obviously, it's a white woman who plays at a white school. Like, literally, the whole team is basically white. I think they had, like, one, like, mixed lady. But basically, the whole team is white. She's a white woman from Iowa. So you have, like, middle America. I mean, and not, not even middle America. I mean, like, the middle of the map of America, like that part of America. The super the super Midwest, super white Midwest going up against LSU. They actually happen to win. Also, I think that people um, look at Angel Reese. And uh, I guess I don't want to I don't want to know about the – I would say the criticism that Angel Reese receives, I think a lot of people want to see – Caitlin Clark received that same criticism, but the fact of the matter is they're different people. Um, I think Angel was a little bit more like brash or whatever. And granted, no fault to her. She, she's just being herself. But when you are being yourself, sometimes being yourself does come with things. And Caitlin is a little bit more, she lets, she lets her game talk more than she talks, I would say. Um, but I think that what she's doing for the sport has been, I mean, what her, Paige, Juju, Angel, um, even Don Staley, you know, just, just uh, being – coaching the way she coaches, dressing the way she dresses, and then having her team going out there and dominating. I think it all does something great for the game. And I think that in general, it was just a great spectacle for um, women's basketball. And I will be excited to see 
um, if this if if her hype train can carry over long term into the WNBA, because I'm somebody that thinks that. Um, granted, yes, I do think that we've had more eyes on it. Obviously, you can't argue with the numbers this year, but I always thought that, like, as far as the women's game, women's college basketball always seemed to be the peak of women's basketball to me. And then sometimes when these players get to the lead, they don't tail off. It's just like the W, you play in the summer, um, sometimes the games at odd times. Um, so maybe that they don't get viewed as much or you stop or you stop hearing about their name as much as you did when they're in college. But long story short, I don't think that people were hating on her. I just think that some people hated the discourse surrounding her because, again, we're in America and there's always a race element um, that comes into these things like this. Dante, what's your, what's your take on what's been going on with this? Do you agree with Pav that it's not hate? Yeah, I, I do agree with Pav. I think the hate is more so toward the coverage of Caitlin Clark. I think uh, the hate that she gets is from casuals and people who just hate on everything women do like that's a part of twitter and that's a part of being online that we have to acknowledge you got some niggas out there who just hate women and no matter what happens they're going to say some negative shit and you know as far as like diana tarasi and all the players reaction i actually love that because we're starting to see you know so often people try to uh separate uh men and women's basketball but the the competitiveness is, is the same, bro. Like you're talking about people who are great at their craft. You have a young person who's been great on a lower level who's about to come to where I am, and y'all are already crowning her as the GOAT, saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that. So naturally, as competitive, they like, nah, wait a minute. Like, this shit not sweet. Like, it was the same thing Cheryl Swoops said when they asked Cheryl Swoops, is she going to come straight to the W and dominate? It's like, no, nobody does that. You feel me? And so, and again, to Pabby's point about the black-white thing, when you have a sport that's been dominated by black women, naturally they're going to be sensitive about this. Like you got people who are overlooking Cheryl Swoops, overlooking Cheryl Miller, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Tina Thompson, like there's so many black women who paved the way and held this game up, Don Staley included. And now that, like you said, it is a great thing that we got more eyes on the game. You got more people who are coming in to watch it. But when you had the people who set the tone and laid the foundation, being essentially ignored. And this is an even deeper conversation because you have black women in the WNBA now that would tell you shit. Well, all y'all talk about is Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi anyway. So it's like, it's just adding to it. It's adding fuel to the fire. So I think the hate per se is more so toward the coverage that she receives because everybody with two eyes can see the shorty can hoop. Like it, that's not, that, that's a non-starter. And then also we got recency buyers. She's the fresh new face. Like people don't remember Maya Moore because Maya Moore is retired. Like, you know, they've already allowed that to start slipping. But those of us who watched knew how great she was. But um, I think it's more so it's the coverage. And that's that's never going to change. And uh, honestly, that might be a good thing because that just shows people, you know, people are actually tuned in. They yeah, locked into what's going on. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, like, I feel like you can say that with, with any major phenom or anybody coming to a new league. Like, we're always going to be mad about the coverage. But that's just the world we live in right now, period. Like, that's why I think I can see if she wasn't. Like, it's some stuff overboard, yeah. Maybe some stuff is overboard, but it's not like she ain't been hooping. Like, so that's why, like, I feel like we got to take the coverage with not a, not a grain of salt, but there's a reason why they're talking about it. It's like the same thing as we, I'm going to keep bringing up Caleb Williams. Is Caleb Williams Patrick Mahomes? No, but, he, you know, sometimes he might do a spiral or something like that, one of them side passes that look Patrick Mahomes. Like, they're going to compare him to it. We've been seeing the next LeBron, Lex LeBron for all these type of years. I think maybe with, with, that it comes with hate, but that's just how we're winning 24 out 24 7 365 news coverage with these things. So, when you have somebody who's holding it down, you're gonna get that type of thing. But I did see a lot of stuff on at least on my Twitter timeline. As Bang says, fuck Twitter, I don't worry about your timeline, but like a lot of people was, oh, this is this, this is this is uh, you know, a, a ploy to get her into the national championship. It's, it's not that deep, in my opinion. But Bang, what you think about this? I think multiple things could be right at the same time here. I think that the black women in the WNBA have a good reason to fill away. Um, this girl ain't even in the league yet. So, yeah, they should fill away. Um, you know, Ice Cube offering $5 million and everything. Yeah, they should fill away. Um, but also, you do have to understand, you, you, don't, have to, you don't have to curb your feelings even though you know what's going on, like right? you, you could just if you wanna if you wanna trivialize it, just go watch the Great White Hype movie, and go watch how Irish Jimmy Conklin, um, you know, rose to fame for a specific reason, right? 
So, and that's not Caitlin Clark's fault. Like, none of this is Caitlin Clark's fault. She just so happened to be a white girl that's good at basketball. So there is going to be a lot of people of color that's not in the WNBA. And quite honestly, that don't watch the WNBA that's going to have feelings. There's a lot of casual fans out here that's, that's jumping on the we hate this woman bandwagon because, you know, she a white woman balling. But at the same time, again, they have never probably watched a full game, um, college game, let alone a full WNBA game, right? With that being said, again, it's not Caitlin Clark's fault. She didn't ask for this. She's just great at what she does. And I'm not mad at the WNBA players at all. Like, if anything, honestly, if they did not say that, I would have been like, okay, y'all on bullshit. Because now it's competition. And like, now you're going to be going up against grown women. And I believe that the women of the WNBA had to say that. Especially Diana Taurasi had to say that. Why? Because now you're bringing in a rivalry before she even, you know, you're creating a rivalry before she even steps foot in game, what, whatever the stadium name is in Indianapolis. Like before she steps in, now you can't wait to see Diana Taurasi versus her. Now you can't wait to see all of these women versus her. That's what brings ratings. the Mercury, damn, they're already advertising. I don't know if y'all saw that. Then, no, yeah, yeah. No, they are. Um, the they go are. The group. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, so the thing about it is, is you need this in order to keep the story going. So from a marketing standpoint, they would be dumb as hell just to be like, yo, we can't wait to, to have her in the association. It's going to be great. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of those other fans, they're expecting that because they're women. They just want to graciously bring her in and yeah, girl power. Ah, no, <laughs> Diana Taurasi, like, nah, you think that shit's sweet. Now, wait till your ass get up in the league and you got to play these, we got to play these killers. Yeah, she G, and I, I can bring a different audience because of competition. Because, Dante, you tell me, because I don't know. I'm not about to cape for this shit. I don't watch this shit like that. But if you if if you correct me if I'm wrong, but the Aces and the Liberty built super teams, right? Yeah. All right. Outside of those two, then what's the rivalry in the WNBA? I mean, you you got like sparks. Yeah. It's like you got like regional yeah. things. No, 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 no. It's more so regional yeah, like players. players, like, uh, players though. Who's the player? Damn. Fair. Yeah, because like, I'm, I'm going to say, like, they tried, they, tried to make, they tried to make AJ and Stewie a thing, but that's not really a, a I think, thing. I think you had more, but then, like, everybody started teaming up, and it's like, well, we all on the same team now. So, I mean, like, I, yeah. Yeah. But, like, no, it's like other ones kind of like, like Sabu, and, like, you could, like, makeshift things. But, yes, I get what you're saying. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's yeah. why that's yeah. important. Yeah, and that's now, what I was going to go ahead, go ahead, before no. you go, Scott. I agree with Bang because – What's one of the major complaints everybody has about the NBA right now? No rivalries. It's, it's, it's no rivalries, no competition. It's all some AAU bullshit, you know, which is, you know, some surface level argument. But when you really look at it, that's how a lot of people feel. That's what the game is right now. So for them, I love the fact that they aren't just embracing shorty with open arms. I'm sure it's going to be, you know, sisterhood, all that other good shit. But in terms of playing basketball, we're still competitors. I still been, like I said, they've been carrying this league and not getting the credit for it, and now y'all finna just give it all to this white girl. So, like, no. And then it ain't all race, because shit, Diana Taurasi white. So, I mean, it's just players in general have a... They're going to feel some type of way because you're taking this woman and trying to crown her day one. Yeah, I get that, too. My whole thing is, too... I just look at it like... I get all the actual... Not complaints, but, like, feelings for, you know, the black woman who played in the game and feel like, oh, well, this white woman's just getting credit. That's usually how it goes with anything. You know, and, and not just in just the sports with anything, but at the same time, she's a needle mover, bro. Like I could, I I would understand more if she wasn't nice. You know what I'm saying? If she was like kind of overrated, I would get it. But she hooping, so like, and I'm I'm looking at it more from not even the player perspective because 
I like that too. Donna Tarazi is supposed to say that. Like, I'm I'm the big dog. I, I didn't been here for a long time. You're not just gonna come up in here and think you're gonna be dominant. I, I that I get that from the fan perspective or people who are trying to uh, act like we're you know disrespecting the pioneers of the game by giving love to this person. I just don't think that's the case. You're going to go with whatever the hot new thing is, is, you know, any type of player who comes in there and they're, you know, there's going to be people. We saw this with LeBron, LeBron's own teammate said, Oh, we know we gonna see how he fits in with us. Like that. That's not how it works. And he, he, he was the needle mover. She's the needle mover. So they're going to talk about what moves the needle. It's just, that's just that simple to me. So, but I think this type of publicity and just the fact that we're discussing this is great for the game. It's great for women's basketball because when I, I can't ever remember a time, and I know, Pav, you say you feel like, you know, they've always been like the, I guess it's been the best college basketball, but at least from a casual viewer or somebody who doesn't really pay attention at all, I've never seen this type of outside hype to the point where I know these people because I don't watch it. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to y'all and act like I watch it. I don't I, I don't watch that much NBA as it is. And so and it, and it's not just a thing against women basketball. It's just me with the, with the sport of basketball in general. It's just not as entertaining to me as it once was. But I think this kind of coverage is great. And I think if anything, it's going to help. Is she the only face of the league? No, there's there's other great players, Asia Wilson, everything they're doing and with in Las Vegas. And now Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that them moving the home game was because of her. But I also saw somebody else said the Aces have moved to a big re- arena before. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not too sure. But either way, a uh, salute to her. Um, I do think it's crazy that Kaitlyn uh, Clark and Angel Reese be making less in the WNBA than they're making in college, which I think is crazy. And I didn't know that that the that WNBA draft is that quick. Like, yep. like they yeah. have like no time. next week. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, but the season I, started in like three weeks. Yeah, which which is insane. It's how, not how, really long, how long is that training camp? This shit started like the week after the draft. That's that's yeah. wild. I that's mean, wild. They, I mean, but they 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 play in the summer. You can't play in the winter with the NBA. So like, it, you know, it's just like an unfortunate yeah. circumstance thing. Yeah, but, and before we go, I just want to say this. I need everybody to remember this. Black people in particular, when you click on these links, when you watch these videos. Only thing that counts is the views. They don't give a fuck about your outrage. And as a matter of fact, they know that the more outrage, the more people are going to click on it. Yeah. So a lot of They're times they know ex- outrage. Th- th- thank you, professional. Let yeah, them know yeah, what you're they, 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 like, they, they are what they want. Pounding, they are fist pounding in meetings because of your outrage. Like, exactly. That, that was bro. the point of it. That was the point of it. But let's move on to our next topic, man. Uh, we want to talk about uh, 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 LeBron James, but LeBron James Jr. Uh, Mr. LeBron James Jr., Bronny James, as we all know him, he was a freshman at USC this season. He is entering himself into the NBA draft, but also entering into the transfer portal uh, in college, basically meaning he's going to be working out for teams, taking meetings for teams, see what his draft stock is like. Worst case scenario, if they don't like what they're hearing or he doesn't get drafted, he has the option to go back and play. But, of course, for another team because he doesn't want to be a USC anymore. When I first read the headline, I thought this is kind of crazy because he didn't play that well this year. Now, I'm going to cut him some slack because he had a crazy health scare. Um, which, you know, nobody's going to come off something like that and just be hooping right away. That's just not going to happen. I think health is number one. Glad he's actually moving and shaking. And he, in fact, even got to play basketball this year is great. But, you know, just looking at the numbers and the playing time, it didn't look like, you know, he'd be somebody who's going to be, you know, who's going to be NBA drafted. So first I thought it was crazy, but then I read the entire thing about it. And I like it. I think it makes sense for a couple of reasons. One, your father's LeBron James. We can sit up here and lie all we want. There might be a team out there that drafts him just because they might have a chance at a LeBron James farewell tour. Nothing that LeBron and his camp do isn't calculated. Everything they do is calculated. Um, he's been saying for years that he wants to play with his sons. Uh, is the unnecessary pressure? 100%. But that's just part of what it is. And he's even talked about retirement over these last couple of weeks, saying that I don't know how much longer I got in me, maybe one or two years left. So he's been floating that out there. Maybe this is a possibility where somebody 
uh, drafts Bronny just for the prospect of maybe having LeBron as, you know, on their team for the for real, farewell to it. He has a player option this offseason, if I'm not mistaken, where he can decide what his next path is going to be. Is he going to, you know, stay in Los Angeles and move on? This is all things that really matter. Now, is it something that benefits Bronny in that perspective if a team just drafts him just because they want his daddy? No. But I do think that's part of it. But I think it's also a way to look at, we'll see what these other teams are thinking. What do they think about his game? Is there a plan to uh, grow him even if LeBron is there or when LeBron does retire and they are on the same team? What's that going to be like? And if LeBron and his team don't like what they're hearing, he can just go to another college and try again. So from that perspective, I just look at it as Bronny keeping all his options open. And I personally don't have a problem with it. I think this is cool. I just hope that if he does go – to an NBA team, that there is actually a plan in place for him to actually grow and become a, a decent player. I don't think he'll be, uh, you know, great or anything like that, but I do think it's, it's, it's a good move. Pat, what you think about this? Um, I, I think it's a good decision. Um, for one, I think that, you know, uh, obviously, like you mentioned, there's um, health scare. So, you know, you're not going to – you're probably not going to – I mean, the fact he even, again, played actual college, college basketball this year, this year I think is a, a something that should be commended on um his part but he's been bred to be a pro since the second the man first picked up a basketball because his father was LeBron James so I think he has a pretty good idea of how to be a professional athlete so being in college maybe didn't even fit him that well like I mean you I'm LeBron James son you got me going to class bro what are we doing I don't want to go to class I just want to hoop or I just want to do xyz I don't have to do that and I think that um you know, I've heard, granted, I'm not going to sit here and say I watch mad USC games, but from what I know about Bronny, he doesn't seem to be more of a star. He seems to be more of a guy who could be like, let's say, for a lack of better terms, like a Patrick Beverly type guy, like a Grayson Allen type guy, like one of those guys. Josh who, Hart. Yeah, like Josh Hart, like the guys who can come in and help your team, but he really depends upon the other players that are around him. Like he's not going to be the superstar. So I don't think that college basketball in general – was the best place for him because those guys kind of get lost in the um, shuffle. Usually in college, unless you're like a dominating ball handling guard, you're like a big like DJ Burns or you was a flat out bucket getter, you're kind of going to get a little bit lost in the sauce or um, your stats may not look as good as somebody else whose game might not even translate as well to the league long term as yours. So um, and then granted, you got the uh, clutch machine behind you. All he got to do is have a couple good workouts People go out there and say, "Oh, we think he can be a he can be a key role player, a star role player for years to come." Somebody will take a shot on him second round, or even if he doesn't get drafted, he can be a two way guy. He can he can get the chance to grow. Um, I think that he'll at least obviously because of his father probably he'll at least get the chance to play in the NBA. Now, how long he plays in the league, um, that's solely up on him. Like I think like when, even when I heard about it, I was like, "Yo, if he can have a Wesley Matthews type career, that is perfect." And um, that would be a complete um, win for the James family and for him. So I think it's a good decision. I'm, I'm, like I said, I just don't think that college basketball was probably the best thing for him. And I think that, again, he's been he's been bred to be a pro. So I think that when he gets to the next level, and I think he will get to the um, next level, I think that eventually he will fare better in the um, NBA than he did in um, college ball. I just want to make a quick, uh, com not comment, but I got correction. I beat I said in the chat that Bronny has to May first. Well, May first is when the is when the portal uh closes, but he has till May 29th to make a decision of whether he's going to maintain his college el eligibility or uh, going to the NBA draft. So basically, gives him about two months to go through the process and things like that. Um, of course, we all know the uh, the uh, draft lottery will be uh, before that time, so he still gives him enough time to take meetings and. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, you gotta worry about the lottery. You ain't gotta yeah, you gotta worry. About, you don't even need to. You don't even need to watch that show. You don't need to worry about the lottery. Ain't nothing going on up now. Ain't nothing going on there for you, dog. <laughs> um, bang! What you think about uh, you know, the, the situation for for Bronny? Um, I'm conflicted on the college basketball thing because I think Bronny would have had a better season if he didn't have the health issues. If if Bronny didn't have the health issues, he would have scored more than five points a game. So that I'm conflicted on because of that. But I also believe that he was a one and done player in the first place. And this is just holding to that word that he was going to be a one and done player. And the only way that he's coming back is if he shits the bed during workouts. That's it. 
Um, I don't see Bronny as a top flight NBA star. I I I I see him as, you know, a a role player off the bench. Um, can go to certain teams and be a quality starter. Um, but and that's that's I don't care who's the coach. Like, dude could go to a, a great developer. He's he's not gonna be a fringe all star even to me. Like, I'm not about to call this man Vincent Askew or some shit like that. I'm not about to call this nigga Mario Ellie. Vincent Askew is a name, bro. Right, yeah. I'm not about to I'm not about to call him that, you know what I'm saying? But he's definitely somebody that can make an impact on the team from a bench player perspective or just a fringe starter. I think that's what it's gonna be. Um, I think that the I don't I don't want to call it criticism because I don't call it criticism, but I think some of the things that some people have been saying about, you know, how LeBron is positioning his son, and then I think that's that's warranted. I do think that's warranted. And I think that's warranted only because of how you, what you said in the beginning. And now the chickens is coming home to roost. It's not working out. It didn't work out the way that you expected it to. You said things to put your son on the pedestal. And as a father of three, I will say things to put my son on the pedestal too. But I also, and, and this is something that I've been learning, that I've been learning within myself. Every action has a consequence, whether it's good or bad. Yep. There's intended consequences and there's unintended consequences. And I think that the unintended consequence of LeBron James Jr. being your dad is the expectations. The unintended consequence of LeBron James Jr. I mean LeBron James being a very vocal dad and a mega a megaphone for his son and being at his games and having a reality show around Sierra Canyon and all of that stuff is. When you don't get to a certain level, people are going to have something to say. And with that being said, it does put more pressure on Bron Jr. To, to, to be something that he's probably not going to be. And that's the whole thing that's disappointing about it. If I was LeBron, I wouldn't do anything differently. I wouldn't change how... I'm propping and positioning my son. We should all strive to do that. And when y'all all have kids on here and your kids get older, and if y'all are in a position, I would hope that you would put your son in that position. Let, let's be let's be very clear. If I am ever blessed to have uh, kids with athletic genes and height, <laughs> uh, God bless, by the way. Right, God bless. I will be LeVar Ball on steroids. Yes, so. I will be LeVar. But, but even with LeVar, LeVar Ball, the unintended consequences is – your oldest son is hasn't played in two years. Your middle son is huff, <laughs> and your youngest son can't stay healthy either. But we happy that they made it to the league. You know what I'm saying? But things ain't working out the way that we expected it because of what you did. So you got to take that good with that bad, that happy with that sad. You can't be you you can't run that, from it. Are you saying that Bronny has a chance to be Cooper Manning? Is what you're saying? No, nah, I don't think he's gonna be Cooper Man. <laughs> nah, nah, but Cooper Man now he eating. Like he out here eating. Like he I don't transfer think. Too? You say what? Didn't Cooper Man just transfer? No, oh, no, that's no. You, no, you think about, about, about Cooper Man? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 you mean the uh receiver the older, to be? Yeah, exactly. The oldest, the, old, uh, the oldest Manning, the Connor Roy of uh of the Manning family. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's who Cooper is. But uh, Dante, what you think about this, man? You got a uh, what's your perspective on on, on Bronny making this move? Uh, I mean, I've been screaming Bronny is Josh Hart for the past two years, but I think more than anything, once hey, again, man. we keep he's Josh passing Hart. on the fact. <laughs> no, for real, Hart, that's amazing. But he, and, he and, he, great real. but he and here's why I'm saying that because Bronny's gotten tied up in the goat conversation, which is bullshit. Because his father is the goat, people are looking at him the same way they looked at Marcus and Jeffrey. And they trying to keep continuously compare them him to them. And at the end of the day, when you look at uh what scouts have said about Bronny, you know, people that have actually watched his development as a player, especially over these last couple of years, that's all they've ever said. They've not once has anybody ever said he's gonna be a lottery pick, he's gonna be a superstar. You had some people reaching with the first round shit, but even with that, once again, the kid went into cardiac arrest before the season started. Like, so he came in, he came back on a minutes restriction. You know, he isn't the starter. So it was a lot that happened this year that made a lot of people, it gave them just an easy target for them to shit on them. But I think this is a great move because you get a free evaluation. 
You see what you need to work on. You see what people are saying about you. And then you can make the choice to whether you want to pra- uh, work on your game in college or you want to go, like you said, go into the draft, probably ended up in the D League or, you know, some developmental place and then work on your game that way. So um, I-, I like the move. Again, Le- uh, Bronny's always going to catch crazy criticism. And I think the only thing LeBron could have done different was not name him LeBron Jr. But even still, as long as he picked up a basketball that that energy was gonna be there from people. That's just we gotta just accept that because no yeah. matter what he does, even if he fuck around and turns into a superstar, which none of us believe, even if he does turn into a great player, like like people are gonna find a way, you know, to try to tear him down. Outside of obviously Ken Griffey Jr., who's the most successful son athlete? Like Barry Bonds, Steph, Barry Bonds. right? Barry Bonds. I forgot about Barry Bonds. Yeah, yeah. Steph, Steph is up there. Arch, 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 Peyton, and Eli. Well, we gotta see Arch get to the league. Like, no, I mean, no, like, no, 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 I mean, Peyton Daddy, Archie, oh, Archie, yeah, yeah. Archie, yeah, yeah, Archie, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. yeah. Archie, Archie wasn't terrible. The no, Saints no. was bad. The Saints were bad. He was, he was on the Aints. Yeah, they were getting pop how drive into the hard concrete when he's with the Saints. Yeah. But, uh, let's 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 go on to the actual NBA man. Is this is the last week of the NBA season? Thank God. I don't know about y'all, but this has been the longest. NBA regular season. I I have ever experienced in my life. Like this is I have I have, I I've, 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 it's just been long, bro. Like it felt like it's been 182 games, not 82. This is the last week of the season. A lot of playoff positioning, but a team we've been talking about a lot on here this year has been the New York Knicks. Knicks have been having a pretty good season, actually a great season compared to actual uh Nick history. They are 46 32 right now. They're tied. Well they're the fourth spot because Orlando has uh I guess like the tiebreaker over them right now. So Orlando has a third spot. And by the way, it's so funny that the Bulls made that trade and they're in purgatory and the Orlando Magic is the number three seed. But I'm not going to go into that right now. But if you look at exactly what they're doing, it's obviously that they need help. Now Julius Randall uh, is out for the rest of the season. He's going to be having surgery up on the elbow, off shoulder, my bad. And they just got OG and they'll be back, even though they got blown out by the Bulls at home when he came back. He had a nice win over the Milwaukee Bucks last night. Um, and then you also have on the other side of the Eastern Conference, Joel Embiid. Uh, is back for the Philadelphia 76ers. They are currently the seventh seed in the play-in right now. They will be getting ready to play the Miami Heat if the season ends today. Uh, Pav, man, what do you think that this injury does for the Knicks? What can they do um, without having a Julius for the rest of the year? And, and do you look at the Sixers as a dangerous play-in team with them being back? I think it possibly puts somewhat of a damper on this season somewhat. Um, or it may not. I don't know. I mean, I I, I think the Knicks are in a very interesting position. Um, because, again, I think this is the best team they've probably had since, I don't even know, shit, the mid-90s. I mean, or even when they went to the – whatever. I think this is the best team. He's the ever. best team since, like, 94. 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is probably their best team, realistically, in, like, about 30 years. I mean, you have Jalen Brunson, who um, I still want to see more playoff runs from him. Um, but he seems to be like he he shit the best guard they've had since Clyde Frazier, basically. Like he seems to be that good. Um, you have a very, very solid team around him. OG, I think, was one of the best trades of the um season. He seems to be a superstar role player. You did get um Mitchell Robinson back. Again, like I think that you know, you 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 a need Randall for his toughness and for his scoring. But what if you happen to make a run while Julius Randall was out? And get ready. You still have all your picks. You have some um tradable assets. Like if you can make a run while Randall is out, you think well, you may feel more comfortable packaging Randall and some um picks to go out and get you something else that you may think may help you more um than um Randall can. But all in all, for the Knicks, I think it's a great season for them. Um, I still think that 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 they can be a second round team. Dare I say it? They could still maybe maybe make the conference finals depending upon um seating. And I know. Here is why I say that because again the Magic are the a third seed right now. But if they can jump up and get they that, can, they can win the first round because Cleveland stinks. No, but, no, no, no. But listen, if they can jump up and get that three seed uh, with the way the Bucks have been playing, are you convinced in Milwaukee right now? No, are but I still will put. I was still, right still put my life savings over the Bucks over the over the Knicks. There's I would not. No, 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 no. I would not put my life savings on it. I would put some money on it, but I'm not putting my life savings <laughs> on it. With the way the Bucks been playing, life savings. I put a fuck no. on it. I saw them lose the goddamn Grizzlies the other night. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I get that. that. I'm not saying. I'm not saying I believe in the Bucks because I don't know who I believe in right now. And that's actually gonna be our next topic in a minute. But 
I think as as somebody who has experienced the Tibbs ride, Pauls, uh, as I look at it like this, they're running out of gas. And I think Julius Randle is an important piece to them. But y'all also know how I feel about Julius Randle. Julius Randle giveth, Julius Randle taketh. He does as much bad stuff as he does good. To me, it just looks like Jalen Brunson and the rest of his team are running on fumes. Now, I do believe uh, OG and Anobi coming back is going to help them. I do think they can 100% win the first round series. Cleveland is no. I don't know what Cleveland – Cleveland, they lost their last three. Y'all already know how both me and Pappy feel about Donovan Mitchell. We, we, we have been anti-Donovan Mitchell for a, a, a long time. But that stuff they pulled last night at Staples Center. Oh, my God. It was blown up. 28-point. Uh, had, had Paul George playing 2K. Like, like the, 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 I've never seen Paul Jordan with the bind dribbles, and it actually went in. Like, so they can win that round. I just don't think they can beat a heavyweight. But I do think this is a successful season for this. We had the homie Steph, a pad. We saw the Steph. Oh, Steph uh, is, is a big Knicks fan, kind of like he had acceptance. <laughs> I, I know a Chicago sports fan, what that sounds like. No, 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 no. Now, I'm not saying I would pick them to win that series. I'm just saying that, like, I, I think they can win the first round. And I think yeah. that if everything goes completely to hell correct, and then Brunson going to keep playing the way – I mean, Brunson, the way he's playing right now, he's playing like a top-10 player in the NBA. He's playing like – not saying he is. I'm just saying he's playing like a top-10 player in the um NBA. And, again, if OG is back and his elbow is feeling – granted, I don't know what, what you know, his elbow situation is like, but if it's feeling good, you have a uh, – Black man over there, Harkenstein, the uh, newfound black man, <laughs> the black king, <laughs> the, the, the black king, Mitchell Robinson is um back. You you have Hart, you have um Divincenzo. Don't forget, you still have Bogdanovich off the bench. Granted, he hasn't been, I don't think, doing what they brought him there to do, but that still is fifteen to twenty points, maybe on the um right night. You got Burks, like you have pieces. And again, when I look at the East, I'm not that convinced with anybody else. So I think that for the Knicks, like uh, um, um, like, like I said, I think this has been a successful season. And the Randall thing, I think it could get very interesting for Julius Randall um, if they can't make a run without Julius Randall. Because then, like I said, maybe you look to put Randall and a couple of picks because you still have all your picks. And maybe you want to go out there and get like an upgrade over on Randall. What that, what that upgrade would be, I don't know. But that's why they get paid to, to figure it out. And I don't. And you asked me about the uh, Sixers. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think that if, granted, my thing with Embiid is that he gets away with murder. All the time. All the time. I think that uh, the first, at first it was Brett Brown. Then it was Ben Simmons. Then it was James Harden. Even though in that game six last year, he was on that damn court too when they was up seven. And he wasn't yep. shooting the motherfucking ball. I remember. Yep. And game seven, he had eight points too. I I also I also remember that. But my thing about him is like if he's healthy, if he's honestly, honestly healthy, I think that granted, I think ramping up a week and a half before the season starts to go to the playoffs is weird. And I think it's uh could possibly be detrimental because he's also a guy who's had a very extensive injury history. Um yeah. remember, I, I, I think that the way his career has played out, we forget he he damn it, we we didn't even know if he if, if he was gonna get on the court because he missed two whole years. In the um, beginning, with the uh, stress fracture in his um foot, so I think that if he's healthy, why can't they get to the finals? I don't want to hear no excuses. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm no, not. I'm, I'm not no, rolling. Bro. <laughs> no, we're not I'm, not, I'm not rolling. G. No, look, no, look. no, 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 and no. <laughs> At some point, if you are him, you are gonna have to be him. I'm not disagreeing with you. No, I'm wait, saying, wait, 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 wait. This roster ain't bad. You got Tyrese Maxey, all-star. You got Buddy Hill. Actually, one of the best shooters of all time, Buddy Hill. Tobias Harris. Now, I know his contract. He's getting paid too much money, but he yeah. doesn't suck. No, he doesn't suck. He's a 40 yeah, degree day. I'm right. Not, you're right as far as they, there's no excuse, but there's also the Sixers. That's what I'm saying. No, like the, him. It ain't the yeah, Sixers. Yeah, it's, yeah, him. Yeah, right, man, it's him. You yeah, got Nick me. Nurse, who was a championship coach. What, what, if, 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 if he is there. And he is healthy. Why you can't win? At some point in time, you're gonna have to get turned into him. Hold on, I how about the question? How yeah. much better do you think this team is than the Bucks team that won in 2021? I don't think they're better than the Bucks team. That won so why you can't win? No, I'm saying I don't think the the the, uh, the Sixers are better than the Bucks in 2021. Yeah, but I'm saying how much better do you think that Bucks team is than the Sixers team? 
I've been a lot better than the six and ten because I, I I trust I trust I trust Giannis a lot more than I trust MB for just the, the no now they, no 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 you know you say you that now at the time okay well I'm gonna be better say that now with the okay, knowledge well, here, of what here's my, okay well, here's a sec I I trust their I I trust their second unit more than I trust the second I like Tyrese Maxey. Do I think he can do in the play? We always knew that Drew was going to step up defensively. We always knew that was going to be. We never really had an issue issue with Chris Middleton. It was just can Giannis make the plays. So I tr- I don't trust Tobias Harris. We've seen him in the playoffs before. I don't trust him. Tyrese Maxey, he could as a, as a second player and not have to worry about hard and having the ball all the time. Maybe he can be a playoff star that helps him beat out. That could be it. I'm not trusting Rocco. I'm not trusting you know, the, the rest of these niggas on this team. And then that, that's the issue. And then add that with Joel Embiid just not being what we need him to be. That's why I don't think it's it's a it's a it's a layup. But I also see what you're saying because who knows who's coming out the Easter Conference, which I'm gonna go right into the next topic. Who do you trust more? The Milwaukee Bucks or the Boston Celtics? Because both could be trick offs right here. Yeah. Neither of them, but if you put a gun in my head and ask me to pick, I guess I'll say the Celtics right now. Um, I mm-hmm. guess I'll say the Celtics right now just because of, I mean, we can't deny. Granted, obviously, they have good regular seasons all the time, but they're actually having a historic regular season right now, and I don't think we can deny that. Also, I think even when you look at their roster, they've never had a Porzingis before, and I'm going to keep saying it. I know that, you know, because the Porzingis situation didn't work out in um, New York, and then Lucas just that didn't pass on the ball in Dallas. But last year when he was in Washington, that still was 22 points, nine boards, two blocks on about 50, 40, whatever the hell he's shooting from the um, free throw line percentage um, wise. Like that's that's still a very good component to your offense that you didn't have in um, previous years when it was so much Tatum drive, kick, step back, step back, shoot or Brown driving everybody and try to get a layup. Like you do have a guy who's 7'3 and can like get you some actual buckets and can also defend. You also have Drew Holiday. Derek White's playing the best basketball that he's ever played. Granted, you can move Horford to the bench now because I think, you know, Horford, God bless his soul, but the man probably tired. He's been doing this since 2004, 2005 at this point. And with the way the Bucks are just looking, it just seems like time is running out. Uh, I think that this is going to be a Bucks team that might not even win 50 games. Like, granted, I do know the playoffs is a completely different season than the regular season, and you just have to focus on one team uh, for, you know, uh, two weeks straight. Um, but they ain't really looked that good on the dock. Like, they've been, I think, yeah. 19 and 20 on the dock. They yeah, had, worse than, like, yeah. third best record in the league under Adrian Griffin yeah. when they wouldn't even listen to him. And Dr. came in and put all the shit in, and they 19 and 20. Now, granted, you know, you hope Middleton can come back. I know Dane's been in and out the lineup. Even Giannis himself has been in and out the lineup. But that's kind of one of my issues is the fact that all of them have been in and out the lineup, and you make a coaching change. So now all y'all trying to figure it out at the same time, and we a week away, two weeks away from the playoffs, and they're still trying to figure things out. And we're still talking about, well, you know, if they can do this, if they can do that, then maybe I think Boston um, has a little bit more continuity. Again, I think that we always talk about players growing. I think coaches need a chance to grow too. Joe Mazzulla, this is his second year coaching this uh, squad. I think that maybe he learned from some of his mistakes in the past. Also, you still have Brad Stevens, who was a good coach in his um, own right upstairs. So maybe those guys can get together and scheme something. So uh, to answer your question, neither of them, but if you put a gun in my head and made me pick, I guess I would pick the Boston Celtics. I, I, yeah, I'm with you. I don't, I don't, I don't trust either. I would still trust the Bucks more than the Celtics just because I trust Giannis more than Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. It has nothing to do with the roster. I, like I've said about, t- not this, but Doc Rivers for years. Like I've never seen a nigga get put into the Hall of Fame over one championship more in my life. And, and and we saw that team wasn't the same when Tibbs left as defensive coordinator slash uh, associate assistant head coach. But it's to me where, like, the pressure definitely is on Boston because if Boston don't win this year, when, when, when are you going to do it? Like, I understand everybody saying Tatum's 25, Tatum this. So yeah, but these niggas have been in the Eastern Conference Finals, if not every year, um, every other year since 2018. So eventually it's like you got you to gotta shit to get off the pot. Like, that, that's really what it is right now with them. But I, it, I don't know who's coming out of these. And, it, and for all the reasons you just named about, I think that the Celtics will have the easier run to the NBA Finals because they're going to be playing, you know, the winner of the eight, I mean, the nine, 10 game essentially will be the AFC. And Milwaukee's going to have a tough role. They're going to have to face 
probably either Miami Heat, a team that you know who they lost to last year, or a team you just named the Sixers, who we saying that you know can and be do it. That's not an ideal first round matchup for them, especially when you got a guy in Doc Rivers who, in my opinion, is just one of the most overrated coaches of all time. So I don't trust either, but if I had to, I would go. Uh, with the Milwaukee with the Milwaukee Bucks. Now we're we're getting short on time, so we're gonna go to our, our our next our final topic. As we just said, we're about two weeks away from the start of the NBA playoffs. Um, playing starts next week. Pav, what are some of your potential playoff matchups that you hope you get to see in round one? Um, I would love to see uh Magic Knicks. I know as it's, as it um stands right now, uh, the Magic are third and the Knicks are fourth. But I would love if like Cleveland could win or the Knicks, something could happen and we get Magic Knicks. I think that would be a very interesting series. I know the Magic are top five in defense. I think they've had the best defense in the league since the uh, All Star break. And Paolo is a guy who I obviously he's in the second year, so like the jury is still out. But I think the jury is still out. Uh, as as in, is he going to be one of those? You know, I mean, I know we have Wimby, so like, like discounting him, uh, is he going to be one of those best guy in the league type things? Like how we look at a future with like an Ann or Shea, um, those type guys. Like, is he going to be in that category, or is he going to be in like one of those second tier guys? Like, a, I don't know. I mean, no disrespect, but at this point, like a Paul George or like a Donovan Mitchell. Like, is he going to be one of those guys, or is he going to be one of those, like I said, top level guys? And I think that in you know the Garden always brings out the best in people. I mean, we, we remember what it did for Trey Young a couple years ago uh, when they went in New York and they actually won that series. And again, I think that that could be, like I said, a very interesting series. You talk about a Knicks team who has been beat up. You talk about a Magic team. Like I said, they have the best defense in the in, in, um, in the league since the All-Star break. They can pretty much guard anything that they want to do. They also have bodies for Jalen Brunson. Like, you even want to get you know, weird. You could put Jonathan Isaac on him. You, you, you can put Suggs on him. You could put um, Folks on him. Like you have a lot of bodies that you could put on him. Um, so I think that that would be a very interesting first round matchup um, that I would love to see. Also looking um, towards the Western Conference, I would love if we get like a Lakers Thunder series or even if like a Lakers T-Wolves series, but definitely a Lakers Thunder series. I think that if the Lakers had it, have a chance to get past the first round, I think that them playing the Thunder would be the... Um, easiest or matchup or the most ideal matchup for them to get past and the series that we'll probably end up covering Clippers Mavericks. Now I know we didn't got this series a couple times um, over the past years. And I still would think the Clippers would be able to take this series and probably like six, but I think that the Kyrie factor is a real one. That's something you have to really like look out for. Um, because I, I granted, I think they have bodies for Luca. I think that, you know, you got Kawhi, you got PG, you got, uh, you got, um, Terrence, man, you have guys to guard Luka, but Kyrie to me, I think, is the X factor in that whole series. But like I said, if I had to pick, I would still take um, the Clippers. But also, I just think that, that that that's a very annoying first round series for anybody to uh, to uh, have. And my last thing I'll say, looking forward um, in some other rounds, is the Nuggets. I think the Nuggets have legitimate chinks in their armor. I really don't like their bench. I think uh, I was I was I was talking about this with the homies the other day. I think that if I think that this, I would I would argue, no player if if Jokic can do what he did last year with this team, I would argue no player has done more with less than Nikola Jokic will have done if he can actually win something with this roster. Because when I look at this roster, granted, shout out Jamal Murray, but people act like Jamal Murray, Kyrie Irving. I like KCP, solid starter. I like Aaron Gordon, solid starter. Michael Porter Jr., if he has to think on the basketball court, you are about <laughs> to fuck up. He is a guy where he needs to catch the ball and shoot it. If he got to use his brain at all, bad. Reggie Jackson is your only other creator, really, on the um team. You got Peyton Watson. You got Christian Braun. Basically saying this roster is not that good. So I think this team has chinks in their armor. And if they could get to a series with the Timberwolves, I would not put my money on Minnesota because I think Minnesota is stupid. But if Minnesota could come out and win that series, it wouldn't shock me or or it wouldn't shock me if somebody else got the um Timberwolves. So those are my takes. I'll say this. I, I don't uh, – there's no series in the East that, like, intrigues me. There's a couple in the West that could intrigue me. Like, if Minnesota holds on to that number one seed – and I got a feeling they probably – I mean, Denver could, could get – one. both essentially tied right now, Minnesota's number one because of percentage points. Uh, but – Minnesota first round against the Lakers or the Golden State Warriors, that would intrigue me because then we're going to really see if this young team is ready. As we've been all been saying on this show, like 
you know, all the Timberwolves and the Thunder uh, actually good teams. This is their this is their this is their time, or this is just a cute story. So it will be kind of a passing of the torch for them to go through the two well, the player and the team that has dominated the last decade. You know, the, the team being the Golden State Warriors and the player being LeBron James by knocking one of them off. That would be a big uh, chip off their shoulders and said last night after beating the Lakers, of course, without LeBron playing, that cat is going to be on the way back. But like you just said, uh, Pappy, that's a, that's a they're dumbass team. Like, so you got that. But Clippers Dallas is going to be very, very fun. It looks like that's probably going to be the series. Luca hates them, like hates them niggas. The Clippers got a lot of questions to answer. They have not played well this entire second half of this season. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm expecting for quite a play, and that's why I'm pretty sure they've been resting these last couple games. And then, you know, even though I believe that the Clippers can beat them, you just don't want to face Luca and Kyrie for seven games. That's just the defensive job you don't want to do for seven games. But I'm also looking at a potential matchup OKC versus Phoenix. Kevin Durant returning to OKC. That would be a fun storyline mm-hmm. right there for me that I, would, that I would love to see. Um, I think the West in general is going to be entertained. I'll say this about Denver. I don't agree with the less with more with less thing. I do think there are chinks in the in the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Name me a team. Listen, I dead ass. I look. Listen, I compare this team to Braun 19. Come on, nah, no, man. no, no, no. Jamal no. Murray is better than every nigga on no, that. That's cap. That's, that is a cap. Who's if you look better this, on the 09 this, cast, this, better than Jamal Murray. Oh, what you say, Jamal Murray? No, 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 no. Compared to the times. No, 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 hold on. Yes, Jamal Murray is a better basketball player, but compared to the times, Jamal Murray is about an eight to ten guard in the league. Mo okay. Williams was about a seven to no, ten point not, guard bro. in the league. Who seven? Seven. Mo Williams in was not a seven. He made in he his made time in that, that in his year. Time. He did he was make an all-star. All-star seven, bro. Oh, we have one in, in all-star, that, bro. No, no, no. Jamal no. Murray ain't made none. Okay, that didn't hit him. He's not going to get in the one. guard I, era in the, in the West. I'm going to – I don't agree with Pat Pavy. I don't – I. while I don't agree with you, while I don't agree with you fully, when you make an all-star team, no matter how you make it, you're top something shooting guard, point guard, or whatever. So just for that year, just for 2009, for the year, technically, Pav got a point. Now, I just want to say this. I'm not one of the people who think that LeBron was playing with trash in 09. I'm not one of them people. No. He had a good team. But, no, Jamal Murray better than them niggas. Then LeBron would have killed to have KCP in, on, on that 09 team. Yes. I, I, I disagree yes. with that. If you put Mo Williams in the league right now, he's not even starting. But we are also, like you said, in the best era of probably guards, guards. and point guards yeah. probably ever been That's in. why he so, ain't an all-star. No, game. I said comparable to his time. You had to judge people about when they played. Comparable yeah, I to his that time. Guy. I compare this team to LeBron's 0-9 team. I, I, mm. I, can't, I can't roll with that. I, I can't roll with that. I think this is a good team. They're just showing what a team in the second year does. We talk about them being they, – they, they basically the number one seed. They're basically the number one seed right now. Because Nikola Jokic is incredible. Yes, but it's not just Jokic. It's not just – Jokic is incredible. We were, there at Stables Center. we were there at Stable Center. We were there at Stable Center. Whooping he ass. A, he had a lazy game when it was 35-17 and like 10. He's whooping ass. Yes, I didn't I even didn't. realize Jamal Murray was out. Exactly, right. but but that's also that's the like problem. <laughs> you didn't know he wasn't there. I didn't realize he was out. They I'm said not, he was back. Out. They said he was. Me. They said he was back after like a seven game absence. I was like, nigga, when? Like what? The, I'm not trying it. to tell you. I'm a big Jokic guy. I just don't. The Jamal Murray month Williams comparison is crazy to me. Like, and crazy, we, even, even just comparing it for that year, no. It's Mark Williams, crazy. no, absolutely not. I'm, I'm not, not right. It's not crazy, but bro. It's not crazy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see. I want to debate about that later on, man. But we got to move on. Uh, Pat, we, we, we thank you for joining us per usual. We didn't get to show your artwork, so we're going to do it now. Here we go. Weekend Association. We have we got to give it up every episode. <laughs> Pat will be joining us each and every Monday. Uh, next week, we'll be, we'll be uh, previewing the play-in game. So, of course, you can follow Pavy. At Pavy World, visit Pavverbs.com. We got some cool stuff coming for y'all real soon. Stay in tune uh, with that, man. So, Pav, we holler at you, bro. My man. Shout out Dante in the chest. Shout out Damien. He said, Dante really brave wearing that. Well, he's not in Los Angeles because he was. 
you definitely get banged on. <laughs> I would de- yeah, I would definitely. I'm, I've learned my lesson. Nigga, you, you fooled me once, I can't get fooled again. Like, this is not an LA hat. This is not an LA hat. <laughs> we all right, all right, Pav. We gonna bring in uh, the homie as we get ready for another uh, Monday uh, segment that we like to call "Respect the Culture" with the homie Larry Legend. Uh, Lero, man, how 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 you feeling, brother? <laughs> There's no such thing as the big three. That's what I feel like. <laughs> I feel like I, I might we might need to just jump straight in this, man. Talk let, about it, G. Talk let's about just it. get straight into it. If you have let been me... living under a rock these last couple weeks since we have been off there, since we've been off the air, saving my right? energy for this segment. Yes, yeah, since we've been off the air mm-hmm. in these last couple weeks. Uh, I've been taking care of some personal stuff, some business stuff. We have not been able to talk about this, but we're going to recap this and now get the floor to Lero. Uh, that Kendrick Lamar uh, had a surprise uh, verse on the Future and Metro Boomin album that came out a couple weeks ago, which I really, really enjoy. And he took aim at one Canadian rapper and also J. Cole. We're waiting to see. I think we all kind of know Aubrey's not going to respond, but we'll get into that in a minute. J. Cole comes out with a diss this past Thursday uh, called Seven Minute Drill. Very like this. But that's not the issue. The issue is the apology we heard last night on stage at the Dreamville Fest. I have my thoughts. I know Bang and Don's had their thoughts, but Lero, this is your segment. Mm. So we're going to go to you first. All I can say is what happened to the game I loved? What happened to the game I grew up loving, man? We had 50 Cent. We had Rick Ross. We had Ross beat 50 Cent. We had 50 beat Ja. We had Common versus Cube. We had Common versus Drake. We had Pusha versus Drake. We get... We didn't even ask for Cole versus Kendrick, and we was about to get that, and then the nigga folded... I mean, like a lawn chair. I mean, it's so quick. I don't even think we got the grill going before this man left the barbecue, bro. It was one of the most despicable things I've ever seen in hip-hop history. And now we got guys who are veterans. I seen Sagan, a nigga who snuck and sucker punch Prodigy, saying how he respected (laughs) J. Cole's decisions. Hmm. And it it wasn't a problem to him. I'm just sitting here like, yo. I always, I never thought J. Cole was on the level of Drake or Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, you and your brother have been, you and Reese have been on that for a while. Over 10 (laughs) years. Over 10 years, I've been telling people J. Cole is audio z I remember going to a party once and yarning and turning around and J. Cole walks in the damn building. I swear on my life. That was trying. He was, huh? It was not, it was at a, it was at a base. It was a backyard barbecue party, like on the west side. And uh Cole was out west. Okay. It was a it was a it was like a fat tiger event or something. Oh, like that. okay. Oh okay. and uh <laughs> yeah, he walks in, puts us straight to sleep. I'm like, I gotta go, man. We handed him the blunt. When my brother handed him the blunt, he didn't hit the blunt. I was really disgusted, even though you know it's not my fault he don't smoke weed. It's just if people don't smoke weed, they don't smoke weed. But J. Cole has always been low level to me as far as on the oh. top tier guys. He's not He's like on the Wale and Big Shine class to me. He's not up there with Kendrick. I think Kendrick is there. I think Drake is there because Drake, you know, doesn't care to be there. And then J. Cole is wherever the hell you want to put the rest of them niggas at. I think Freddie Gibbs is better than J. Cole. I said this and people tried to argue with me. The one thing Freddie Gibbs would have did was rapped and stood by what he said. This nigga folded at his own fucking event. Yeah. I had one of his fans hit me on. T- they said they was there. They said they were sitting in the fan with the group of fans, and they all were so utterly disgusted at the words coming out of this man's mouth. What? <laughs> I told y'all last time, I only trust people as far as their mama is black. And I just mean, how far can I trust you if your mother isn't that black? I'm sorry. My mama would have made me go on the block and get my lick back. Yeah, Cole's mama told him to, hey, sit back, man. Leave that shit alone, brother. That man is a fucking assassin, and you don't want no fucking smoke with him. And that's yeah. all I got to say, man. That's all I got to say. J. Cole is demoted. He is not top three at all. Go ahead, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. 
sermon is tomorrow on some dude. Okay. But but to that but so church is tomorrow. But promo is right now. Give it to us. Look, man. And the words of and, and the phrase two things could be right at the same time. Yeah, I respect J. Cole for being honest with himself and saying what he said. I respect that. Mm-hmm. With that being said, that was some bullshit. Here's why. All right. And 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 anybody who's listened to this, I need y'all to pay attention to what I'm saying. You can't pull the gun out and then apologize because you did that. All right. Let's let, we can talk about first person shooter all we want to. J. Cole's been saying, if you want, if we want to go back, let's go back to last year. Well, we could go back to the year before. If you don't like J. Cole, that's cool. But you can't say that at the very least, that according to everybody in the game, he's been heating up for the past two years. He's been saying for the past two years, he is the best. You can say what you want. I don't care who you are. You can say what you want, but I am the best. He's been saying steppers and shit, throwing small shots for since that album came out. Now, was it meant to be disrespectful? No, but it's just what y'all niggas call the sport of rap. He's been saying that he's the best. And when it comes to first person shooter, Wow, that big three line, all of that stuff, Muhammad Ali, which I'll get to that in a second. He said that, and it was also directed to the other man that was on the same track. So if anything, we thought it was ballsy for him not only to go at everybody, but to do it on the same track. He cannabis the situation. So when you say you the best, you have to prove it in hip hop in one way, shape or form. Now, let's get to the Ali thing. He said, yo, we feeling like the big three, but right now I'm feeling like Muhammad Ali. Well, let me break this down for the dummies who didn't realize what or didn't think about what J. Cole was talking about that. The big three at that time is Joe Frazier. It is George Foreman. And it is Muhammad Ali. He said he's Muhammad Ali. Laro. How many times did Muhammad Ali beat George Foreman? Twice, right? Once. He beat the shit out of him, though. The rope of dope. But but he beat Joe Joe Frazier twice. He fought Joe. They fought three times. Fought Joe. He beat Joe Frazier um, both uh, two out of the three times. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's basically said, I beat all of these guys. I'm better than all of these guys. That's the big three at boxing at the time. So you mean to tell me, and he basically said that those two niggas is the Spider-Man mean on the on the track. So you thought Kendrick Lamar wasn't going to say shit? You thought he wasn't going to say nothing? You should have been prepared. And I'm calling J. Cole's bluff here. If that diss track came out with better reception, that man wouldn't apologize. He would have performed that shit at that goddamn festival. Because that's where his people was at. So he had the home court advantage. That's why, and the post that I posted up on the book, that's why I said, I didn't talk about if I like the song or not. I said, this was J. Cole's weekend. I don't think people understand. This weekend was J. Cole's weekend. So being that it was J. Cole's weekend, he had every opportunity to basically not only throw out that song off the album that he dropped as a surprise, but to go ahead and put the finishing touches on everything at the event where he was the last person that was performing. But he saw social media. He heard Joe Button. And he said, man, I fucked up. Now it's an apology. And the unintended consequence is I'm telling y'all right now, because there's too many new niggas watching this. This ain't for anybody on this screen right now. This is for the new niggas watching this shit. Tell y'all right now, he's effectively killed Mm -hmm. the simple beef tracks, the simple diss tracks. Because now, because this nigga has went on and said, oh, man, you know, my energy was off. And 
you know, I just didn't like how I felt. So I just want to apologize to one of the great. He just effectively took competition away from hip hop when it comes to these new niggas. And for anybody that thinks I'm wrong, we're already complaining about how recipes has been lost when it comes to these new niggas in the first place. So tell me this, y'all. If I'm wrong in saying this, why are we talking about three niggas that's been in the game for damn near 20 years now? And we still talking about them still niggas. Talk about them. We still talking about them. There's nobody, there's nobody that has unfortunately has come up on the level. Fuck big three. Let's just say big six. Uh -huh. Let's just say big six or super six. If we want to stay on boxing, let's go super six. There's nobody that has peaked on that level. There's no Ant-Man. If 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 J. Cole and and and, and Drake and all of these niggas is Braun. Katie, Steph, and whoever else you want to name, who's the Ant Man? Who's the Wimby? Shit, who's Giannis? Who's Giannis? <laughs> None of them niggas. Not so I'm telling cool. you, the game, the niggas that's coming up in the game is watching this shit. That's where the competition is supposed to come from. That's where they were supposed to. That's where it's supposed to come. And Cole, who 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 famously said. That he let Nas down. <laughs> let this down. is why. He let him down again. Twice. This Twice. is why. Yeah. Because Nas would have did the same thing. Nas and Jay-Z didn't hate each other. That was just pure competition. So now you mean to tell me I can't have no competition to the dude that's next to me? He's effectively ended competition for all of these new niggas that's coming up they're not gonna understand and know why this moment was important for cole and i'm gonna tell y'all the biggest reason why this shit was so important for cole because we all know on here 10 years ago that nigga wasn't in the big three of shit nope. the big three was drake the Kanye. big three was kendrick lamar i'm talking about the new niggas oh, and yeah. big sean or you could put when Wale it, up in that bitch. When it first started, yeah. it was the three. Yeah. But that was yeah. the big three. I ain't gonna Drake, lie. Drake, I'll argue with too. But, but, yeah. but, that whole, yeah. but, but you yeah. can. That's why I say you can add the a couple. blog era. But, yeah. you, but you can add a couple of people. But yeah. Cole wasn't in that bitch. No. And, and, and for those who forget, he got dressed up by fucking Diggy by implying that he fucked Vanessa. And then the Versace shirt that. shit happened. And then the Versace shirt shit happened. And then all of a sudden, the nigga started growing his hair. And by the time 2014 Force Hill Drive came out, he had enough hair. And then after that, his shit was nappy and locked the fuck up. And he dropped the album and he started hooping. The Grammy line. And you know what? I'm going to wait for some dude to talk about the Grammy line. Because I'm going to tell y'all why J. Cole is hurt. It's the fucking Grammys. I, I, I oh. want, there's, there's two things. One, I know we're going to get into the, the bigger six things. That's one of Lero's next point. But I want Don to get your opinion, and I'm going to go. Go ahead, Don. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I, I'll say this. Um, he wale himself. Like, we just talked about how Wale was in that big three. Mm -hmm. One, The one thing that took Wale out of that conversation was Wale. Like, him online bitching all the time. It was never the music. Like, even though people said he made rap for women and shit like that, he was still cold enough and respected as a lyricist to where we always talked about Wale in that group. And so for him to do this is it, extremely disappointing. Like, it's one of those things where I feel like uh, I was just talking to Al Patron about it. Like, the whole rap community is, like, in shock right now simply because from a competition standpoint, this was the first time we could have potentially got some beef. Well, not even beef, a battle that there was no street ties to it. So nobody was going to die. There wasn't going to be no fights. We had three people who are considered great lyricists. They're about to go at it. They're about to compete. And especially with Cole, because to your point, like you said, he's gradually built himself up to be in this conversation. And you can't spend the last two years talking tough on records with Lil Yachty, and then you switch the shit up now. Now it's just conscious. And like, no matter how much we respect it, like, you know, if you, like you say, all this shit don't matter. Take music out of it. You know, respect your growth and all of that. I would have respected just as much as if he said, you know, y'all know it's no real beef. I fuck with Kendrick. And then dropped the song and played the shit. Like, this was his Summer Jam moment. Like, he really could have yes. did some crazy shit for hip-hop. And like I said, nobody's dying. Nobody's escalating the situation. It was just going to be a whole bunch of great raps. 
And I think right now we all feel robbed. That's what it is. We all feel really robbed of an amazing rap experience because this is what we as old. I, I even though we we only thirty five, I consider us now we old rap. We the old heads, bro. We the old we the old heads now. Yeah. So like everything we've been craving, we not getting, and we thought we had a glimpse of it, and they just snatched it away. Yeah, hey, his Josh is right though. My, Drake definitely believes he's a mob boss, so he's gonna try. <laughs> to talk to him. He's not finna rap shit. He finna make captions and be in turn and, and, and mention mention Baca a hundred times. This uh-huh. this is my thing Sexual on it, bro. Assault boy. You're right, exactly. Sex, I was about to the say the sex that. offender. The right. sex offender. This is my thing on it, dog. This is why I'm so disgusted as, as, as a fan of this genre. Everybody keeps saying, oh, I respect it. I'll be real. I don't respect it. I, if that's how you, first of all, you're a grown man. If somebody made you get out of your body and do something that you ain't had to, that you, you know, didn't feel right and do it, you shouldn't have done it. And if you felt, oh, man, I got in my body, you call that man yourself. Man, John, be real. I really wasn't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? I, it's just, that's just not who I am as a person. Y'all got that relationship. We, as we the fans, we, want, we don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear you 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 saying these things at your festival. Like you just said, Dante, you could have did some summer jam stuff. You could have did what Nas was going to do on a Power 105 stage, but they stopped it with, 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 the, with, the, with the hanging light. And, and but wait a minute, Scott. He yeah. didn't have to do that. See, that's the thing. He didn't have to do – he didn't need anything – to defame a character, to hang a nigga in effigy or anything. All he literally had to do was rap. Stand yeah. on your shit. And stand on it. Like, and we can talk about the this, whatever. I thought it was like just for the simple fact that number one, that beat sound like some Tetris shit. And exactly. number two, your two best lines can't be whole lines. Can't be like, somebody. We're did. all students of the game. Like you can somebody uh, some one of one of the homies text me it was like, oh, the your arms are too short to box with God. You know how many times you've heard that line and rap? Like that's that's there's nothing new. Like his, that, that's his arms right now. Yeah, like come on. And then and then you just even takes the you took the people who whether you don't like Tim Butterfly, or whatever, music is subjective, whatever. But you took the people who was took the weekend to slander it. You you just can killed your own point because you didn't even believe it was mid, obviously. Right. You didn't even believe it when you said it's it. Not. It is not he was one of the first rappers to praise it when it came out. Right? Yes, and this is my thing about that. A side thing is anybody who thinks the Pimp Butterfly is a black power album has never listened to Pimp Butterfly. It's nothing outside of all right, there's no black struggle songs on that album, but as cold, this is. I'm gonna go even further. This is the softest thing I've seen in the over 50 year history of this genre. I've never seen anything like this. And in, in, in the fan base, like you can be a fan and don't lie, bro. Like that's something I think we've seen in this stand culture. Y'all know I'm a, I'm a card carrying whole venger. Am I gonna deny that Sean Corey Carter cried on the radio after Ether? No, that happened. Am I gonna sit up here and act like? That he ain't never made something bad. No, that's Jay Z versus maybe want to throw up because he's rapped so much better than that. We have to be real about our favorite artists. But now you make Kendrick look like the boogeyman, and this is like the. By the way, this is the third rapper that's apologized to Kendrick. Max. Like there with Lupe apologized to Kendrick. Uh, Jay Electronica, yeah, Electronica apologized to Kendrick. Like we all know that Kendrick has blood affiliation. Nick Sean did too. <laughs> Big Sean did too. This is this is not breaking news that Kendrick has blood affiliations, but there's got to be more to this. That that this Kendrick send these niggas his disses. Oh, this is what I'm finna drop y'all. But it just makes it worse. And even from a Drake perspective, even if Drake wants to shoot back, which I definitely don't see him doing now. But even if he does want to shoot back, this is why it's so hard to ditch this Kendrick. What are you gonna say now? Because Cole just said the discography thing. So you can't come up here like, oh, it's boring, nigga. Anyway, playing Finn Butterfly in the club. We just we just heard that. So to me, it, it, as a sport, it's everybody, oh, he's 39, he's 38, he got kids. Y'all want to care about beef. Kendrick got like three kids. Kendrick like 36. They're like, the same niggas. The same Just niggas. one's tall and light-skinned and the yeah. other one is short and dark-skinned. I'm not saying we got to have, uh, you know, the Benny Siegel, uh, Jada Kiss type. No, that's not these type, type of dudes there. I want to see sparring. You know, like Kendrick let off a shot. You love a shot. Now let's go back and forth. That has been killed, and I no longer care about this. And like, like all y'all said, this I believe is a career blow. Now, am I am I saying he's not gonna do the numbers he does? I, 
I'm not saying that, but nobody's ever going to take that man seriously again, especially you. He better not say anything about oh, being no. the best of anything. You can say over. Muhammad Ali. Over. Muhammad Ali would have never did this. Like, Muhammad Ali could get knocked out and be like, no, nah, I'm still better than that you. That nigga called Sonny listening to Coon. Yeah. But, but, nigga ain't apologize for shit. He said, he said, "Come on, gorilla, this is a yeah, thing." Like, gorilla is a gorilla. Ali was talking his shit, bro. Somebody like, put like, a gun out on Ali. Somebody yeah. put a gun out on Ali. Bro. And like, I say this, like this might be because I'm, I'm literally, I, like I said, I've been stumped all fucking day. <laughs> this might be the most embarrassing hip hop moment. Since Ever. that nigga free, since, no, since that nigga freeway was in the studio, put, said, the put a beat on, put a beat, <laughs> put a beat on, put a beat on. <laughs> He was begging for that because he was this getting makes, cooked. This makes this was terrible, bro. This makes Ja Rule really look like Tupac. And you know what's funny about this? <laughs> I was in an Uber Saturday night, and my Uber driver, for whatever reason, was playing hit him up. And first of all, that was one angry young man. <laughs> yes, it was. Like, I always look at that. He was wilding, but you know, as as being thirty five, I'm like, who made this nigga that mad? You hear that? <laughs> and then you hear J Cole apologizing. Like, come on, dog. And, and if you didn't want to respond, don't respond. Like, yes, do I wish Biggie would have responded in like an actual way to Tupac? We all know that he actually did respond on his album. Like, uh, you know, I, I forgot what song. What's the song where uh where Diddy's talking in the background? Uh not long kiss goodnight, the other one. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, uh kiss not, your ass goodnight. Like, I don't know what whatever, yes, but he, he yeah, he responded to him on that. Do I wish he would have came out and said something about Tupac? Yes, but that's not who Big was. You could have did that and got away with it. Don't shoot your shot. And then at your event, say, oh, I'm sorry. And then be like, hey, can y'all make some noise for Kendrick Lamar? And everybody in Kendrick's clip, hey, rappers are laughing at this nigga. They like, put punch with LOL. LOL. And he said, no, I respect it. No, nigga. Kendrick is at home laughing, dressed like Queen Latifah on Living <laughs> Single, bro. He is home. I told you these niggas was soft. I told you these niggas was soft. And then also Drake, like Drake is probably gotta look at it like, see, that's why I ain't do nothing. Drake will but never admit it, but Drake knows. Is, Drake is he, using academics to get messages out there, bro. Yeah. Like the game is cooked, my nigga. Like, what are we doing? Right, the game is cooked. And here's my disappointment. Like again, that's why I said the 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 battle rap, the just the, the sport of rap to me is now done. Yes. Because there's no new, there's no little nigga that's gonna come and 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 be on this. And I had said something a couple of weeks ago where I'm now disappointed in what I said. I said that I truly believe that J. Cole truly is one of two people that really want to prove that he's the best rapper alive. And since I listened to the album, since I listened to the album from front to back. I was standing on that. I was like, yeah, because Pi, him, Daylight, and Absol, them niggas was barred up. And I was like, see, Cole really wants to be the best rapper alive. Then I got to the last song, and I was <laughs> like, well, he tried, but it just didn't come off. But then the weekend happened. Sunday happened. Last night happened. Cole don't want to be the best rapper alive. Cole, and, and here's here's why mental health matters, y'all. Go ahead and say it. mental health matters. 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 I think Cole wants to be the best rapper alive, but I also believe there's caveats to it. He don't want to have to prove it. He feel like he just have to prove it through his own merit. Well, in what we grew up in hip hop, you have to prove that you are the best rapper. And when you get tested, you have to show it. This ain't about ain't every beef ain't big and pock. No. All every beef eat. ain't every beef <laughs> ain't right. All every beef eat. ain't every beef ain't MC Ren and DJ Quick. Yeah. This was a battle just to say, yo, we are the only two, because Drake don't even want to be the best rapper of all time or alive. The don't. only two dudes that wanted to be the best rappers of all of uh, alive right now. Had the chance to prove it. And I truly believe that Cole saw the reception and was like, damn. And he nutted up just like he did he when did. Diggy dressed up his ass about 12 years ago. 
He Shout out Trey in the chat. I wasn't talking about who shot you. Who shot you is what actually started it. There's a song. I'm, I got to look at the life after that track. Think you talking about Long Kiss Goodnight? Long, long Kiss Goodnight. Long Kiss Goodnight. I make your yeah. mouthpiece so be like Della like Reese. Reese. Yeah, yeah that's something. Yeah. But uh, Lero, next topic just goes to what we were saying about who's the next. So go ahead, bro. Before we get there, I do want to say this. One thing I would have expected from Drake, uh, J. Cole last night would have been to even let Kendrick get on stage and rap that song. <laughs> that would have been more on <laughs> than him apologizing. I was just like, okay, you know what? Next subject. Since we here though, we talking beefs. Uh, we talking rap. We really talking who the best lyricist these things is, is what matter. Uh, y'all grew up. I know, like I say, Bang is a, is our older brother, but we all grew up Nas, Hove, you know, Eminem, DMX, yeah. Uh, Etc. Ti when he came out, Kanye when he was dropping, all of that era of people who were trying to prove that they were the best. Do y'all feel like do, it's anybody these days that want to be the best rapper? I, I know it was called guys. Not at all. I do think it's a couple of guys that I I would say like really it's not a lot. It, I think Jid is one of them guys who probably want to be the best rapper. Eventually, yeah. he's gonna do. Yeah. He probably do the work that it take but do y'all see it being like you said a six like we do got our personal favorites you know i'm putting fred over two of these niggas in this top three thing it's gonna be kendrick fred you can name them other niggas if yep. you want. but outside of that you know we got a lot of it's a lot of guys who rap i feel like the only people who really care to be the best are kind of past that in age like it's not a lot of niggas who under 30 who want to be the best rapper no I, I think yeah. I, I think it's not I think it's not even just rap. I think just the music industry in general, like the way that the music is looked at right now, it's hard for it to be a competitive sport because a lot of these artists got to be more than artists nowadays just to do anything. So I feel like it's more than just the sport. And especially with rap, everybody, they grew up in a different era. You know what I'm saying? When we grew up in an era where it was competitive, we named all these battles and stuff like that. Even when, when we're naming the Coles, the Kendricks, the Freddie Gibbs, they're, they're all in our age they bracket. From that. Yeah, they, we're, they're all in our age bracket. Go ahead, mm-hmm. Dante. Yeah. I'm going to say it real quick. Luxury rap ruined hip hop. Ooh. Like it, it took us away from the essence. And so now it's just like with basketball. Them niggas back in the day were playing a little bit harder because they didn't have them guaranteed millions. You know, mm-hmm. back when niggas was washing their own uniform and shit like that. So back in the day when you actually had to hustle to become a popular rap artist, it was different. Like the hunger was different. I now see. this shit is really like AAU ball, bro. I can hey, get I in my computer you. and just rock out. Maybe like seven years or so ago, me and my brother were having a conversation, maybe even longer, but we had a conversation when Ross came out. Like when rappers come out rich already, what are you rapping for? And a lot of niggas came in after Ross that was like, yeah, I got the Bentley. I got the crib, the this and then that. It's like, so like when I got to listen to certain rappers, they got to that point after so long. These niggas came in the game with Bentleys and the big chains. Like nobody rapping because they was off. Like nobody was struggling before they got here. Why the fuck yeah. are you here? Gee, you, you remember that? Like, you remember it was about how trying to get to that level, not come in like that. So I'm a hundred percent with you, Tay. 100%. Hell yeah, G, because you, you remember because we all hold fans. You remember mm-hmm. how 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 how, in, um, how much of an uproar it was, and that nigga switched over to the luxury raps talking about Basquiat and all mm-hmm. that other shit. We like, yeah. wait a minute, nigga, you what's you the, the crack deals? What? What's going on? Let and me ask you. Off, he started he started off rich rap, yeah. and it yeah. didn't catch, and people didn't yeah. like that. So he went to a hustler side, and then he went yeah. back rich rap. Yeah. So let yeah. me let me go even further. Because I think Josh said what I was about to say just a little bit. Is it cool to be the best rapper alive right now? See, we're we're not in an era where that that needed to give you validation. See, the before the source, it was just word of mouth and and battling just period like a nigga just will show up at the studio and we just go we just go ha who who the who the who the ha and and do all that you know Curtis Blow LL Cool J shit and just rap Fine. right but when the source gave us the five mic shit that's when rap really to me truly became became a competition mm-hmm. because now we're judging albums and shit right. And then when Jay-Z says, who's the best MCs, Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas, I think that stamps it. I think that stamps now, because now you get the the ultimate 
Jay Z Nas argument, and that carries over until we get older. His niggas is still having this argument to this day, and these niggas is 50 plus and living their best life. Nobody wants to be that no more. And 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 no and and there's no validation in being that. Y'all said J.I.D. There's no validation for J.I.D. to be the best rapper of all. Because nobody, I mean, nothing against J.I.D. Because I think that nigga's dope. Mm -hmm. But in the grand scheme of things, nobody give a fuck about him because he could rap very well. In fact, he gets called a lame for being able to rap very well. And even to go to Gibbs, the, the first time I saw Gibbs in person was in D.C. When he came out to D.C. And the breath control of this nigga the craziest is shit I've ever seen second to none. And that comes from per- perfecting your craft. Mm-hmm. Like, this nigga did not take a breath, fam. I've seen this nigga doing push-ups, rapping in bars before. Like, he's right. like it's, so he's up to par right. with Right. So that's called perfecting your craft. Niggas don't want to do that shit that's no also more. also caring about your art. Like, and I feel like Thank that's you. a deeper conversation with not just music. And I'm going to sound like an old head, but with this generation in general. Like, that's we can look at... Everything. I never understood as as a I'm going full old head right now. I never understood growing up in the era where you have so much information as a YouTube and you know having Google and things. We having a smartphone. We all remember a time when there wasn't the internet. Then I was like when I I didn't really even get on the internet heavy till I got to college. Encyclopedia and yeah, that's and you had. had that's all we had. Like even when we had it at home, we had download. So it would be one of my parents were using it. Even when I could be yeah. on the computer. Yeah, there was, there was a time limit I could be on there. So like we, and we still went back. When I became a hip hop fan, like, you know, Jay-Z, you know, DMX, Eminem, 50, that era is like where I like Biggie and Pac a generation right before me. But I went back and listened to all that stuff. There's kids now, they don't even listen to stuff that came out 10 years ago. There's people who... Probably only know Drake from if you're reading this. They don't probably even, listened three years ago. Yeah, they don't even know comeback season Drake. They don't do research. I feel like when it comes to craft, if there's anything, there's people out here who are making movies who have never seen Godfather or something like that. Like they don't do research. I don't think it's cool to care about your craft now. It's just about I need to get my money, get my money, get my money. Now, is that part of how the country might be shaping things now? Maybe. But I don't feel like there's a competition aspect in just period. If you look at a competition, like just look, look at the way we talk about stuff. And I know we talked about the beginning, all love and respect to uh, Dawn Staley, but there is only one goat. I hate the term goats. There's no goats. There's one. Okay. Like and, and that, that, there's a competition thing. Okay. And that's where it comes to with all these discussions where we talk about the all-star game. We yep. just talk about the all-star game. Why there's no dogs? You know, people used to take it seriously. That's just how it is with this generation. And general. yes, Everybody and Jason, and, and, and to answer Jason's question, Jason's question, um, yeah. is there a difference between competition and beef? Yes. Yeah. You don't got to hate people. Yes, you ain't got to hate a nigga. When you hoop, when you hoop, right. that's competition. He better, he better. He wins. Like, he he wins. better, he better. If you play, if you box, yo, he if he box. better... He better. And, and they, I think they hang out when they 50 and all that shit. Right. And I yeah. think part of it, I think also a big part about this is, is niggas is scared to compete. People use the term compete like it's a bad thing. No, it is not a bad thing. I use competition in a different way. Way in my life. I feel like all of us are in a competition. That don't mean I hate the man. That actually means that iron sharpens iron and steel sharpens steel. Like when 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 I see other people doing pods and shit, I don't hate the pod and none like that. I don't hate them niggas. Like, no, y'all are sharpening my blade. So help so by me seeing what y'all doing, it's like, oh no, they coming out swinging. I bet. All right, let me go ahead and step my shit up on my shit. People got to stop using competition like it's some bad word, like it's one of the bad words that George Carlin say that you can't say on on the air. You can say fuck shit, ass, pussy, all that shit, and you can say we in a competition. And that doesn't mean I hate you because we in competition with each other. No, there's friendly competitions. And then when it gets past that, it's not competition. It's I want to knock your head off. And guess what? 
that shit's cool too. Yeah. That shit's cool too because it is some people that's out here that's podding. And I'm like, man, that's some weak ass shit right there. That don't yeah. mean I'm hating. In my opinion, that shit's weak as hell. That's when we see producers over. on other shows take our, our shit stuff. and our shit, yeah. and because they on terrestrial radio and they doing the shit, because that shit's happened to me before. Fuck y'all niggas. But yeah. it's people that I know that I'm cool with, that I'm close to to this day, that did that shit to me when I was doing Windy City Underground. That's still my nigga because at the end of the day, hey, man, shit, go ahead and get it get it how you live. But y'all niggas still ain't better than me, and you know it, right? That's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. It's just when you take it too far. And be some dicks, cause at the end of the day, that means you was never my nigga in the first place. Yeah. There's competition, and there is you was never my nigga in the first place. That's the difference, right also, there. One last thing, and then we we'll move on to Lero's last point. Uh, I also feel like the social media thing has something to do with it. people don't want to be embarrassed anymore because they know the social media reaction. We know that people are going to take it and talk about it all day. We we know that what it comes from. So a lot of these, like the dunk contest, people don't want to be in a dunk contest. They don't want to be clowned by getting a dunk contest. People are scared of competition because they might lose. I'm going to go, this is kind of like we used to fight back in the day. Niggas shoot because they're scared to get beat up. Yeah. That, that, that's just gonna, pretty much what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah, we in the Floyd yeah. Mayweather era of, of rap right now. Like, it's all about putting that picture-perfect resume together and saying, hey, I never took an L. Just to stay on our boxing shit. Because like we said, one thing about the greats back in the day, Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard, the motherfucking right. Tommy Hearns, Marvin Hagler, they fought each other. Mm -hmm. And that was the goal. I'm going to come up here to show you I'm going to whoop your ass because I'm the best. Mm -hmm. We're not in that no more. But it's about I'm going to make these numbers look good. I got six billion streams. <laughs> I know you say you the best, but fuck you. I got 12 number one albums. You got 11. I got to be the best. I got one more than you. Not saying that, you know, we never actually competed for the shit. So but hey, you know the messed up thing? You know the messed up thing when we say it's the Floyd Mayweather era? They still don't remember that, that Floyd Mayweather beat the shit out of Diego Corrales yeah. when Diego Corrales was the number yeah. one pound for pound fight in the world. They don't remember, you, they don't remember Pretty Boy. Go to you. I want everybody, when we say this is the Floyd Mayweather era, you got to understand that Floyd earned that shit. Y'all yep. trying to do it and y'all ain't earned shit. And for those who might not understand what I'm talking about because it's on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Diego Corrales versus Floyd Mayweather. Watch how HBO was playing Floyd Mayweather during the beginning of that fight and how they was hyping up Diego Corrales. They was basically saying that Floyd Mayweather lose this fight, we probably won't even hear about this nigga no more. And Floyd Mayweather knocked down this nigga six times in that damn fight. And then I want y'all to go and watch the fight between him and what's my man name? Arturo Gatti. Because I oh won hella money off of that because everybody white men and black men jews and gentiles protestants and catholics all them <laughs> niggas was like yo arturo Gotti about to give it to floyd mayweather ass nope. i was like yo who want to bet fam go ahead and pass me that bread floyd mayweather made that nigga quit this That's was before he was level. this was before he was money it was Great pretty boy, boy. Pretty boy had to go through all of the shit so money can make his money. So when y'all say that shit, y'all better go pay attention. Floyd earned that moniker. He Pretty earned boy. it. And once he beat and once he beat Oscar's ass, which means he beat the top nigga or at least the top name nigga, yeah, I could do what I want. Y'all niggas ain't on Floyd level because y'all ain't even trying to do what Floyd had to do to get to the point that he was at. Yeah, apostle, you preaching? You preaching? You preaching right now? I ain't. Like gonna I said, church. tomorrow we go. Hey, some dude, we going to church, my <laughs> nigga. <laughs> we also gonna talk about this on, on summer sessions tomorrow. I definitely be looking forward to that. Um, Lara, let's get to your last point, man, and we we gonna we get you out of here. We gonna get out of this hip hop beef stuff. We gonna talk about beef on the grill. Uh, no diddy. Uh, what we're talking about <laughs> is, so I've been seeing this conversation going on a lot this last two weeks about people weren't letting kids eat ribs in the, in, when they went to barbecues, nigga. Like, what the fuck is going on in America, man? <laughs> What's going on with y'all people, man? Y'all, I know when it came to, like, certain kids would waste food, but parents and people who were around them parents understood which kids would waste that food. Everybody gets a rib. At the barbecue. At least one rib. One. 
If you a real rib eater and they know you clean that bone, you might get a rack. Half a slap. <laughs> but I'm saying, and I don't eat swine. I haven't had swine since 2004. That was the last time I ate pork. And I promise you, ribs is a delicacy. And you only get the best ribs at barbecue. You don't get them at fucking fry. What was the restaurant? Chili's. You don't get them at Chili's. You get them at the barbecue. It's an <laughs> old nigga with some sandals on and some GPS <laughs> jean shorts and a wife beater and a Corona or a Miller Dream Draft. It's been a slap. I'm talking about lather that shit. He might even do that. You taste it right here. You need need no sauce, boy. Taste that. Take that right there. Happy. I didn't grow up in the era where kids didn't get it. Ribs, my nigga. I don't know what's going on in America. I want y'all opinion on this because what the fuck are we doing? I feel like as we see on the internet and what we learn about uh, people growing up is everybody didn't grow up like us, which is like there's a certain stuff that I thought was regular until a regular black people stuff like that I didn't know. Like I saw somebody uh, on Twitter the other day. Somebody had like it was like a couple black movies. And it was like, which one do you prefer? Which one got to go? And somebody was like, I've never seen Five Heartbeats. Like, I, I just, I've never met a, a, a nigga who ain't never seen, you know, Five Heartbeats. Like, whether you like it or not, it's a different conversation. But you got that, you know, people. And, I, and by the way, I think Five Heartbeats is an amazing movie. I saw it again a couple weeks ago on HBO Max. But it's the number one music black movie of all. I think people who be saying the Temptations is number one is a fucking lie. And you only have BT. I, I, I love the Temptations. I think it's I a, love it too, but it ain't I think it's, it's not better than Fire Harvey. I think I think I think it's probably the best biopic. I think Temptations, but yeah, but Leon right? carried that motherfucker, but yeah, huh? It's up better there. Okay, you, you got me. You got me on right. You got me. I'm right. with you though on the group you though. Me. Yeah, yeah. On, on the yeah. group. And, and you got and the temptation was a fucking two day spectacle. Two my days, nigga. Like yeah, we exactly. were at the crib locked wait, in. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Temptations over American Dream. I like Temptations mm. over American Dream. And American Dream. I'm gonna say Temptations. I'm gonna say Temptations. Like like, 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 yeah. <laughs> American Grow Dream. Up, die, come back. American Dream longer than Roots. Like yeah. I, 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 I still. I, I both are classic. I prefer. Uh, Temptation just because oh, Leon's yeah. performance was so great. But if you I got think. uh, five heartbeats took all the great things from the actual real biopics and made it so well, there's a lot of people out there who think that, that was a real RB group. But you add that with, with, with the you know, with the ribs thing, I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. I also didn't know that that people hoarded things that they couldn't eat at, at their house, like, oh, you can't eat this. Like, was there was there like stuff that I couldn't eat all of it? Obviously not. Yeah. Like you're not gonna eat the entire box of, of cereal. But like well, I saw, you ain't gonna I saw, prices, I saw Harry Lennox Jr. come into my job, and that nigga asked for my boss. I said, "Yo, dresser up in here," <laughs> and yelled to my boss down the hall. I said, "Yo, Bill, a <laughs> dresser from Fire Herpes up in here," and he was like, "Who, Harry?" I said, "Oh, yeah." Tell him to come to the back. Harry Harry Lennox was looking at me like, "Hey, when you said that shit to Leon, bro, <laughs> top five greatest things ever, dog." He was like, "Ain't nobody come to see you, Oates." <laughs> was so up, through all. That nigga was like, "Hey, best part, he freestyled that." Yep, like, that wrong. that wasn't the line. He freestyled that. Shout out yeah. to Leon, bro. Shout yeah. out to Leon, classic black actor. Him and Lorenz Tate held black people down for so long. They deserve lifetime achievement awards from BET. And they do that shit. And Harry Lennox Dresser is one of the OG light skinned niggas. Like he, he like like but like when, when, when light skinned niggas still have respect. Like when him and him and him and Harry Belafonte nigga. But like also also give love to Chicago King Robert Townsend, bro. Like if King. there's anybody yeah. who I want to interview, I want to interview Robert. Did Townsend. you listen to did you listen to the Quest Love podcast? No. I did not. I did not. Oh, you gotta listen to the Quest Love podcast with Robert baby. Townsend. Man. Like I didn't know. I didn't know Robert Townsend. I didn't know Robert Townsend went to Weber, Pro and Prosser before he went to Austin. He went to Austin and graduated before my mom got there. Like he went to Austin, but he went shit. He went to one of the high schools that I went to and shit. But he. Like you gotta listen to that Quest Love episode with Robert Townsend. Part, it's two parts. I'm comedy king. I mean, I try my best to be the comedy king. Robert Townsend is somebody who I would love to be like executive producer of whatever the fuck I'm Man. Doing. He's one 100%. of them got him, uh, the Wayans, like really Keenan, Damon as well. Uh, but 
Yeah, bro. I'm I'm big on on my Black Kings, man. Yeah, we, we, you got it. We got. I look one of uh one of my favorite pictures is like Robert Townsend, Paul Mooney, Eddie they Murphy, chilling. but they Paul chilling. Mooney, yeah, top, uh, five. All, top five. Paul Mooney is my my second favorite comedian after after Dave Chappelle. But uh, right. we could be here all day. I know Courtney's in the green room waiting for the yeah. for us to bring in. But uh, Lero, man, uh, definitely uh great another great episode having you on, man. Tell them, let them know they can get in tune with you. Get in tune with me, Larry is Legend on Inst- on Twitter, Larry is Legend one on Instagram, Larry Legend on on Facebook. I'm on there too. I've just been trying to capture all of the little worlds and things. But yeah, rock with your boy. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. And J Cole is not top three. He is not like that. That's all <laughs> I got to say. He's not like that. Definitely, bro. We gonna holler at you next week, my brothers. Appreciate y'all. Yes, yes sir. sir. We are now. We we want even before we go to the hot corner because we actually want to talk to, to Courtney about some football stuff too. We we like I said, this is this this is one of the, <laughs> the, the, this yeah yeah look at Courtney face yeah you got to do work today. We back, we back, we, we back. It's been two weeks. I just got I saw, here. We I we saw, started late. You telling me to look at the rundown? I look at the hey, rundown. Man. I, mean, I saw man. Courtney's face it's when you said that. Our people will never be through. I saw Courtney's face before you brought her up when you said football. She was like. Hey, I'm like, if I please just don't say the don't say their names. Just don't tell me. I don't even want to hear the name Caleb Williams today. Oh, we, no, we're not gonna do that today. I mean, it's, honestly, there's really nothing else to say about Caleb right quarterback? now. Like, yeah, he's gonna, yeah, exactly. He's gonna be our quarterback. Our quarterback. Like, okay, what's, what's up? What's going on, guys? How we doing, everybody? How, how are you feeling, Courtney? It's been a while since we had we ever since we've been doing the show. Period. <laughs> um. Well, professionally, uh, as we all know, we're doing we're doing great over here um that's all going real well I'm trying to trying to be cryptic but it's all going real well okay the sports are sporting oh, so, sports uh, are sporting thank you orlando you know what i missed all of you guys thank you <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the consistency said let's, let's talk, talk cubs about- we will hey. be talking cubs in a local hour and courtney's yeah. going to join us in a local hour to talk and about- in the local yeah. hour uh yeah yeah, yeah i got you yeah, y'all can have all, I, got all the smoke. I don't really get too much smoke <laughs> for the, cubs, but the white socks are going to get the full clip yeah, Bang, Bang is gonna take his uh little break when we take base talk baseball. He'll join us for when we do talk Caleb Williams and, and, and the Bears and then the look wild. But uh before we get into the baseball, let's get into a couple football topic. Well, just one topic before we get to we I, I don't really have much to say about this, but uh John Calipari is gonna be leaving Kentucky. He'll be heading to Arizona to be the new head coach over there. Uh I just want to say this as as a guy. Arkansas, who's not Arizona. It's Arkansas, Arkansas. My fault. Thank you for the correction, uh, producer. Uh, Arkansas. I just have a question. Uh, I know they had a debate about this on Boogie Cousins podcast, where Boogie was talking about, you know, you got to respect Calipari and Rondo. Like, what has that nigga done outside of one ring? Is he the Italian Doc Rivers? Because that, that's kind of what I think to John Calipari. He's the Italian Doc Rivers. What does he do? Like, he always gets into different situations. Like, well, what has he done to even get this 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 deal when we know they're probably going to get rid of him anyway? See, that's crazy, and that's how I know that, like, listen, I used to live in Memphis. Fuck, for the record, fuck Coach Cal, okay? Because <laughs> I lived in Memphis when they had the fucking news outside his gate. It was it was a big story in Houston with the whole Derek or not in Houston in Memphis with the the Derrick Rose SAT cheating scandal. Oh, shit who, 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 on. That, I, yeah. I remember very distinctly the news was posted outside of his house and they had the people with the cameras. It was all real fucking dramatic. Um, and then they they didn't even see the guy leave his house. And then I want to say maybe less than twenty four hours later he got the job in Kentucky. And the next time that like. The Memphis media like saw him was in fucking Kentucky. Like, what a fucking slime ball! I, nobody is shocked by any by any of this. Not me, at least. Coach, Coach Cal, my guy. And I'm gonna tell you what. Coach so Cal, good. Coach Cal gets <laughs> niggas paid. Okay. Like, he gets niggas paid. And one one conversation, he, uh, Derek Rose did the interview and recently. After nil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, but that um, that's my next point. But. Derrick Rose said he wanted to come back to Memphis for a sophomore year. And Coach Cal said, I will not let you step foot on this campus. Marcus Campbell's your family. Exactly. And so the reason I'm okay with this move, and I think it's going to be a good move, because one thing Coach Cal has been able to do is, whether you like it or not, he knows how to pivot with the times. He was able to pivot to the one and done, where granted, yes, he won one national championship, 
But look at how many people he put in the NBA. Look how many number one picks he had. He mastermind, not mastermind, but he was one of the best at getting one and dones because a lot of people don't realize a lot of those recruits that went to Kentucky, they weren't going anywhere else. I don't give a fuck about Coach K, none of that. They wanted to play for Calipari. And now going to Arkansas, he has a, a NIL collective behind him that's like got Walmart and some other shit in it. So he's about to continue to get people paid. So don't be surprised if he goes down into Arkansas and they make the tournament. He may not win a national championship. I'm not quoting him on that, but he will make that a household name. Like I guarantee it. Like that's one thing he's good at. Uh, bang. What, what, what you think about? Cal? Man, I see. <laughs> Is he the Italian Doc Rivers? See, in college, in college basketball, I don't think that matters because I think in in coach in Coach Cal's case, it's about getting niggas paid. Like I think. I think you can – I don't think Coach Cal was in this at a certain point for people to say that he won multiple championships and, and like, the greatest coach of all time. Like, he's not trying to be Coach K. And, yeah, it's it's Tyson Chicken. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, the, it's the chicken that's been in our freezer for all of our lives. Is go about to get this man his money, but nah, I don't think he came in into that. He wasn't trying to be Bobby Knight. He wasn't trying to be Coach K. He wasn't trying to be, um, you know, you know, Big John or or all of those folks. Like if the title came came with it, yeah. And once you get to a certain point, like yo, yeah, you want to get it. But he's not one of those people. I don't think he's one of those people that's going to be at the crib like killing himself because he won. He he did not win the title. He's gonna look at his his players and and say like, yo, did I put them cats in the best position in order for them to get their bread? If I got that, that's cool with me. If I get a title with that, then that's even cooler. Like, like Doc Rivers out here just pissing the bed. <laughs> like he just, <laughs> he just like simply pissing the bed. I also think that it kind of ran its course in Kentucky. You know, it was something that Gino um, Ariana, Ariana, how have you pronounced dude last name? The real Italian, the other Italian dude. Um, he had said something that Mike Greenberg had played um, on Get Up the other day, and he said about how basically you know, about the women's game and how people catching up to them. You don't you don't want you don't want to fall off. You want people to catch up to you. So I think right now, because of NIL and all of those things, that people are catching up to these blue blood programs. So when you look at the Dukes, when you look at the Kentuckys, and when you look at um, you know, North Carolina and all of those, people are starting to catch up to the blue blood programs. That's why South Carolina and women's can now be content considered a blue blood program. We was never talking about South Carolina and the women's game and all that shit, but now they became that with Don Staley. So now you could go to a Arkansas. You can matter of fact, fuck it. You could do like we going to all do when NCAA where when NCAA 2 uh, 25 come out. We could go to that smaller program, that lesser known program and go and make that program a contender and probably get way more money than I would at a blue blood because the blue blood expects you to do this and we're going to pay you like that. No, I'm going to go to Arkansas. These boosters going to go ahead and give me my 15, $20 million a year. Now I got the NIL back. And so now I could get even better players. Oh fam, I'm straight. Don't even worry about it. Some of those blue blood programs don't feel like they need to do that. So that's why I think it's more of an indictment on those type of programs than it is on some of these other ones who now see the light. And with NIL, it can make them a bigger player. You bring up some solid points, man. I I, I can't argue none of those. I, I feel like I respect what he's done getting players paid, but I think we got to stop looking at him as one of the top coaches in the game. And oh, the, I, don't, the, I don't. I don't. Yeah, oh, okay. No, All right. I don't. I, 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 I like I'm with Bang. I'm strictly off the fact that he he gets guys in and he gets them to the league. I I don't think he actually gives a fuck about winning national championships. <laughs> yeah, like Kentucky did because that's just the culture at Kentucky. Yeah. Why would I don't you think... care about winning if, if you can still get your bread, still remain relevant? Your brand is relevant. The guys are getting paid. Everybody, everybody in this situation is winning. I mean, everybody obviously is. not Kentucky. But like, yeah. they're, even they're, life, they're, even then, they're still one of the blue bloods. They're still winning as well. They, it's like, it's like the Yankees. They're winning when they're not even winning, just off brand recognition. 
I do I do think it's gonna be interesting to see where Kentucky goes. Like I wonder I don't know if it's not rumor and then but I wonder if they would consider Don Staley. We hear about Billy Donovan, his interest. We'll talk about that in a little while. But uh let's go Bye, to nigga. Yeah, let's go to our next time before we actually get into the baseball and then bang and go in this halftime. Uh, we're going to talk about a, a big move that happened during our hiatus, and that was Mr. Stephon Diggs leaving the Buffalo Bills and heading to the Houston Texans. Man, the actual trade is Houston sent a 2025 second-round pick via the Minnesota Vikings, a 2024 sixth-round pick, and a 2025 fifth-round pick. And also, they will be voiding the last couple of years of Stephon Diggs' contract so he can hit free agency uh, early. Um, I look at it like this. Um, I think it's a good move for Houston. I do I do think it's a good move for Houston. Houston is doing what you're supposed to do when you have a, a quarterback who had a good rookie season like C.J. Stroud. On that rookie deal, they're building up the team, the defense. They spent a lot of money on Daniel Hunter. Uh, got Joe Mixon. You already have, uh, you know, good wide receivers and Tank Dale. Uh, they got a good uh, tight end. You're bringing in Stephon Diggs into that. Uh, I was surprised that they got a second rounder, uh, that they gave a second rounder, even though it isn't this year, um, with, you know, with his age and things like that. But I think it's a good move. But I don't – my concern isn't Stephon Diggs' talent. My concern is when Stephon Diggs gets the football because, as we've seen from that situation, the problem wasn't Josh Allen. I know that Courtney would disagree with me. But the problem wasn't Josh Allen. It's the fact that he wasn't getting the football as much as he possibly wanted to get the football. So as long as he stays in line, and I do believe he will stay in line because they're avoiding the last couple of years of his contract. He'll be able to hit free agency and get another bag, whether it be from Houston or from another team. But – I think this is something I don't know if it's a it's a it's a what's the word like a conference changing thing because this is still Patrick Mahomes press conference. I mean, uh, you know, conference. I don't really think anybody does matters as long as he, uh, you know, you know, is still playing. And I do think, like you said, Trey in the chat says, I think it's a great move for both. I think it's a, I would say it's a great move for the the Bills because I don't know who Josh has Josh Allen throwing to us. Um, and to the point where I feel like they just had to get him off the roster, just get him off the roster. And in the fact that that general manager didn't even speak to Josh Allen, we're going to really see what Josh Allen is made of this year. I mean, there was that video that was circulating of Tom Brady golfing with all these quarterbacks. And he told, um, oh, you talking about, oh, you say you talking about it was, it was a good move for a bit for uh, Stefan Diggs in the, in the, in the uh, text. You're right about that. But uh, it was video of Tom Brady. He was golfing with Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Devontae left you, Tyreek left you, Patrick. He's like, Randy left me. He was like, Hey, somebody's gonna leave you, Josh. And here we are right now. We're seeing that. So that was an interesting move to me. But I do like what Houston's doing now. Do do we know if if CJ Stroud's gonna be the same? We don't know. You don't really know what quarterback you've got to year three or year four. There's gonna be a tons of film on them. But they're doing what you got to do when you have a quarterback of that caliber. Uh, Courtney, what do you think about this move um, for Stephon Diggs and, and, and well, really for all parties involved? Um, I think it's – I don't think about the Buffalo Bills, so good luck to them. Um, but I do <laughs> – good luck to um, Stephon Diggs. He's got – you know, a lot of people have said that he's washed. He ain't got it no more. So now is a good time uh, with C.J. Stroud with the team that he has around him to kind of prove himself. So I hope he does, um, and I hope the Texans clean up this year. I really do, especially since they sacrificed their baseball team uh, so that the Texans could succeed. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Bay. What you think about this move? Man, I love it for the Houston Texans. Um, you upgrade that wide receiver room. I think that Stefan Diggs being a free agent after this year um, motivates him. You know, he got a stigma on him, so now this motivates him. So I think this is a great thing for him. As far as the Buffalo Bills, it's never a good thing when you're giving up talent and not getting in return. It's never good. Also, even though this is a deep wide receiver room, you got to hope somebody drops or trade up. So, you know, what you're going to say, yo, we're about to replace him with Xavier Leggett. You know, I mean, not saying that that's a bad prospect. What I'm saying is, is that you're going to replace Stefan Diggs and his experience with a rookie or two, like you didn't even go out and address it in free agency. That's my concern. My concern is that you're treating, well, matter of fact, Courtney, I think, is probably going to be able to talk her shit all year because she already has had questions and stated it here, questions about Joshua. 
So now we get to see what he is made of because, look, Patrick Mahomes, they lose their best wide receiver. He kept it trucking, right? You know, let's look at C.J. Stroud. He came up here with lesser-known wide receivers, and he made that shit work. If Josh is who Josh say he is, your tight end ain't going to be your number one wide receiver option. It was not going to be Dalton Schultz and the other dude. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be, you're going to make one of these or two of these wide receivers good. And he ain't got Gabe Davis and he ain't got Stefan Diggs. So, I don't know. Go ahead, Dante. I think it's a great move for both sides uh, in terms of the Texans and Diggs. Uh, and Bears fans, unfortunately, this is why we're drafting a quarterback because you can make splashy moves like this whenever you want to when you got a quarterback on a cheap deal. So uh, it's a great move for the Texans. I like it a lot. And then you, like you said, you force Diggs' hand to where, hey, bro, you got to prove it. You know, people have been talking about you being, you know, the old school diva type of wide receiver. And like I've been telling y'all, the shit is coming, bro. They're about to start treating wide receivers like running backs. Yep. I'm not going to pay your ass. I can just draft another one. Especially because, again, if nobody wants to play running back, where are all these highly skilled players going? To other skill positions. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time before that overflow begins. And we're starting to see it now with the type of receivers that come out every year. So, um, I think it's good for both sides. Um, if I'm Josh Allen, I'm worried. Because, I mean, his career turned around, not only with Debo, but when they got Stephen Diggs. And so to take away Diggs, take away Gabe Davis, and now you're, you've are wiped your wide, uh, your wide receiver room with all the talent that was there, and now you got to start over and build it up again. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see where they go. But it's, in terms of the Texans and Diggs, I love it. Because, you know, the last thing you want is for CJ to have a sophomore slump or he drops off to a point where people are now asking questions and there's uncertainty in the air. Uh, like we've seen, it's all about, the, you know, the energy around your team and everything you're building. And with the Texans, they have a, a, a great energy around that team. And they and it seems like everybody's bought in. And this is just going to add to that. So I think this was a great move for them. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I agree with everything with what you guys are saying. Um, let's move on, man. We're going to talk some baseball uh, in, in, in the hot corner. Uh, we we can actually throw that graphic over now. My fault, Dante. Well, I be I be I don't be a communicate. Not even do be better uh producer communicator. This is not Dante's fault. When you see, we need a say we need a fifth side chat just for we, this show. So we, can just... we do, we do, we do. It is not Dante's fault. Blame me, Scott Lewis. This is my fault when transitions fail. But anyway, we are here for another edition of the Hot Corner. And actually, we can just announce it right now. Even though Mikey's not here, Mikey's not going to be here for the next couple weeks because you know he's doing some stuff stuff he got to do. But the Hot Corner will be a podcast slash video on the Barber's Chat Network. It won't be on HB Media, but it will be on the Barber's Chat Network, YouTube, and of course all of our all of our uh video all of our podcast feeds. It'll be hosted by Courtney, by Dante, and by Mikey. They will be doing this. Uh we're gonna try to do it once a week. We're not gonna have a set day because of schedules, but you guys will be getting this hopefully within the next couple weeks. We got the logo logo looks clean working on some stuff for y'all real baseball content. Uh, between these three, I'll pop up every now and then uh, to give my uh, two cents, but it'll mainly be those three. Uh, Courtney, what do you feel about this? And then we'll go to Dante uh, about, you know, the, about you guys' podcast. What can they expect from the Hot Corner Pod, Courtney? Uh, yeah, I'm just mostly excited about the opportunity to just like completely geek out me and me and Dante um, and Mikey once we, once we get we get hooping. We, we're up there. I mean, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, and I and I definitely appreciate right. you uh, uh, borrowing that Chicago term because we do be hooping when we get to going. Yeah, so you guys have been really well. over the past. It's gonna be a few very months. good show. We have uh, we we I've really taken on a lot of a lot of traits. They're not all good, but definitely. I just know I just know as as a, as a, as you guys, I, I know stuff about baseball, but y'all know baseball and i feel like it's always good to have that um you know type of knowledge that you guys have and to give it to you know our people who, who like listen to the listen to the show so definitely excited to hear that dante what do you think people should get from the show uh more than anything like i said my whole thing is i want to teach people about baseball so yeah we're gonna throw around a lot of terms but we're gonna let you know what we're talking about and yeah. we're gonna do it in a language that you can understand because i mean 
obviously, you know, we know you know how our show is. We we do this for the minorities. And yeah, baseball yeah. is one sport that despite what you see, they are not very welcoming a lot of times. So we're gonna bring everybody in. I know a lot of us played it growing up. Um, we still love the game. And so that's what I that's my thing. More than anything, we're gonna teach you about baseball. You can know absolutely nothing about baseball. If you tune into our show, I guarantee you, you're gonna leave with something that you could build on and keep going from there. That's all I ever really wanted was to just make baseball. Cause my thing is I love baseball. You know, that's my passion. I've always just wanted it to be more accessible and approachable to as many people as possible. And then now, you know, with modern baseball being as statistical and analytically focused, it's become kind of hard to like, you know, you go to, you watch a game on Apple TV on, on a Friday night and you got run, run base probability. Like, you know, it, it's just really hard for new fans who don't know the finer nuances um, of those stats to just go into something with no knowledge. So yeah, that's, that's a real big thing for us is just trying to make it as approachable to as many people as possible. Definitely. So uh, let's get into today's edition. Uh, Courtney, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, well, um, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things, you know, um, I know the sample size is small in terms of games um, that have been played. I think we're what only about, 10 or 11 games played for most teams at this point. Um, <clears throat> but that being said, the uh, pitcher injuries are absolutely stacking, uh, stacking up. Uh, just on Saturday, we had three major announcements, probably one bigger than others. Uh, and Dante can definitely chime in on this one a lot more, being that he is in Atlanta. <clears throat> uh, Spencer Strider uh, has some UCL damage to his arm, uh, and it's looking like it's very likely that he might have to undergo um, a second Tommy John surgery. For those who don't know, he did have Tommy John um, back in, I think it was like 2019, I want to say, when he was a sophomore at Clemson. Uh, so this is yep. not his first time um, having Tommy John surgery. But um, the only, I guess, positive that I can personally take away from this uh, with him in reference to him in particular uh, is that he did sign that extension in uh, con check, confirm me and check me if I'm wrong, Dante. Was that October 2022? That's six years, yeah. 75 mil. So like he's yeah. uh, unlike a lot of guys, you know, who don't always have that nice cushion. Um, you don't know if you're actually going to come back and be able to to perform well enough to get paid after Tommy John that he will be able to come back. Uh, and at least he's got some money. Um, right. But we also uh, just found out about Shane Bieber, uh, Jonathan Loizaga, you know, and that's after the news about Uri Perez uh, with the Marlins as well. Um, Trevor got. For the A's, I know that's not particularly sexy right now. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deliver the smoke to the Oakland A's here in a few minutes. But, um, yeah. no, the pitcher injuries are stacking up. And um, I just want to add, um, add it just because those injuries didn't just happen. Uh, the MLB Players Association and MLB kind of traded jabs back and forth um, because Tony Clark and uh, the Players Association released a statement that says, and I quote, Despite unanimous player opposition and significant concerns regarding health and safety, the commissioner's office reduced the length of the pitch clock last December, just one season removed from imposing the most significant rule change in decades. Since then, our concerns about health uh, Im impacts of reduced recovery time have only intensified. The league's unwillingness thus far to acknowledge or study the effects of these profound changes is an unprecedented threat to our game and its most valuable asset, the players. So, like, that was just the he Tony Clark held absolutely just did not hold back uh, and and basically not basically did blame uh, the uh, imposing of the new rules, including the pitch clock, as the reason why uh, these guys are are seeing injuries more and more and why pitcher injuries are, are continuing to skyrocket. Um, of course, the league countered, uh, you know, and, you know, they have a whole spiel about how they have a study and a group uh, that's trying to look at these mm -hmm. injuries. And again, I am not saying that Tony Clark's statement was like fact based uh, as much as it was political. The man kind of is fighting for his life right now. Um, you know, he almost had a near mutiny about two weeks ago uh, in the Players Association. Man's almost lost his job. So. Um, you know, he's clearly fighting for his life. And keep in mind uh, that like half of the players that were on uh, that board, the joint committee of uh, the joint competition committee that did agree to those rule changes were pitchers. Um, so when he says unanimous, I would definitely take that with a grain of salt in regards to, you know, all the players that I doubt 6000 players said, oh, we hate these rule changes. So. 
No, facts. And uh, I'm about to say two things that you, you're probably going to like. The first one, although we don't root for injuries, uh, before we started the show, Fran Valdez, he was scratching his oh, star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, listen, I don't fuck well, with the Astros, but I definitely yeah. root for injuries. Right. Oh. But that's that's another one. And also, uh, fuck Trevor Bauer because this is his fault. Uh, Tyler Glass now, he made a great point about this where he was like, spider tack and sticky stuff and whatever substances pitchers used to use, it was a... a well kept secret, like it was cool, like it was okay, mm -hmm. it wasn't a problem. But once he blew the whistle and said, Oh, yeah, we use this, everybody's using it, and that's yeah. how everybody started to label it as cheating. Because if you go over to uh the KBO and other leagues, their ball is different, so it's, it's easier to grip. That's so why we saw of, those dudes when they were playing that exhibition game. Um, I forgot yeah. that was that the Padres that played that exhibition game, yeah. They, they the had the players that, against the KBO team, they had them. Um, like touching the baseballs and they were all so just confounded by the shape and like the seams yep. and everything is completely different. Um, and I think uh, they explained the difference between the two and how they sewed the baseball up and how it's basically reverse, whereas mm -hmm. ours are like inverted. And it, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, there's yeah. a whole fucking and thing, that, not a picture. Yeah. So. And that was, and one of the, yeah, and one of the best videos I've seen, you know, with a picture breaking this down was Tyler Glass now. Mm -hmm. And he says, when you take away, the sticky stuff, and you all, if you've ever felt a leather baseball before, you know how they feel. They're extremely slippery. You got to really go out there, put dirt on it, rub on it, all of that. But he said now you're pushing the ball further into your grip. And yep. so now you're holding it even tighter, and it's causing all these muscles to compress. That's why when you see so many guys uh, with their UCL, with forearm injuries, uh, Dr. James Andrews, he came out a few days ago and said yep. that ligament in your elbow isn't fully developed until 25. Yet we have Correct. 16 year old high school kids, kids throwing velocity training, training like throw 95 miles an hour by the time that they're 14. Like, what do you expect? Like, yes, exactly. it is an incredible feat of, of, of human, I guess, development that these guys are able to throw that hard and that fast. But like, keep in mind, we, we humans don't evolve that fast. That's not that's not a thing yet. Let's circle back in 10,000 years and the elbow might be, you know, equipped to withstand those types of injuries. But that's not normal to throw that hard, that fast, that often. Exactly. And it's a reason like you ever notice. Uh, well, I play. So we know. But like softball players, there's a reason they pitch underhand and they can keep going. Whereas a base, this is the most unnatural motion. Correct. In sports. This is Correct. the most unnatural motion for your body to do. And these guys are doing it. 80, 90 pitches a game at high velocities, extreme 100%. velocities. So it, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. And with the emphasis on velocity and spin rate, which don't get me wrong, it's cool. All these stats and things that we watch are cool to look at. But at the end of the day, it's causing more injuries. And to me, as I've seen more pitchers say that, I think that's the cause of it more than the pitch clock. Like Tony Clark is kind of just, he was kind of grasping at straws. Oh, 100%. That. Well, we don't have enough information yet to say that this rule that's been instituted is because of, of, of this rule change. There's not enough yeah. information yet that's available to us. Uh, Major League Baseball has said as much as well. They're like, ever since we instituted the rule, you know, we've had, we've been making sure that we're keeping like a watch on, on injury. So we can, when we are able to finally formulate, um, um, you know, a cause and effect, we can institute ideas to help relieve the injuries, um, you know, as opposed to con continue to watch them skyrocket. Um, but moving on um, to another dumpster fire, uh, the not Oakland A's, um, you know, agreeing to play in Sacramento for the next um, two seasons with the option for a third. Uh, so for those who don't know at home, uh, the Oakland Athletics will be playing uh, in the AAA Sacramento, River uh, AAA Sacramento River Cats ballpark, uh, Sutter Health Park in Sacramento. Um, it does seat 10,000 with the pop with the possible uh, addition of 4,000 in the lawn. Um, no, there is no outfield seating. So, like, can you just imagine Zach Campbell like absolutely wreaking havoc on on small children hanging out in the grass? I, that's my that's my first thought. Is this guy is just absolutely sure. out here just just demolishing children for baseballs? Um, but yeah, so that's uh, yeah, that's going to be from 2025, 2026. Uh, and 2027 seasons with the possibility of 2028. Um, I just don't, for me, I hear that. And I feel, first off, I feel terrible for the fans, right? Like to watch 
especially when you know that like there was the possibility to stay in Oakland, obviously. And I'm not talking about just Howard Terminal. Like they could have stayed at the Coliseum for yeah. you know the next few years until it was over. I think the difference in like what the um officials were saying was only a couple a couple million dollars. Keep in mind, they're making hand over fist in TV revenue sharing. So, like, it's not like he's losing out on any money. A's are only averaging, like, $6,500, you know, or 6,500 people, I should say, um, per game so far this season, which is, I can't, that, that's, and, like. And that's just tickets. That's not who's showing up. Yeah, I can't even, like, wrap my mind around that. That's insane. 6,500 people, especially in the, in the Coliseum, which is such a large ballpark. Um and I just, yeah, I feel really, really bad for the fans um, in, in Oakland, but I really feel for the players that get drafted into that system and are in that system currently um, who have to live with that dysfunction. You work your entire life to reach the pinnacle of uh, of the show, right? And then, really? We got to play in a, a triple, triple A ballpark? That's insane. Yeah, no, nah, it's a joke. And I'm going I'm to say this. I'm trying to find this guy's name to get it real quick. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. This is how backdoor deals happen. The mayor of Sacramento is setting up for one or two things to happen. Either the Vegas deal falls through and he can snatch days, or the Vegas deal is successful and the, uh, they're still going to expand. And they want that expansion team to be on the West Coast, preferably in California. Correct. So Sacramento is trying to show them that they you know can be what? a viable MLB city. Yep. And you know what I think? I First off, I truly, in my heart of hearts, because first off, I, I used to live in Las Vegas, so I'm still very, like, I always was very interested in, in Nevada politics. That was what I went to school for, uh, was political science. Super interested in, in the, you know, the ongoings of, of Nevada politics still, even after I left. The journalism that has been like local journalism has been so good about keeping John Fisher in the A's honest about their intentions. We are in it's it's mid almost mid 2024. We still don't have legit renderings of the ballpark. There is still is no there have been no construction companies hired. There has been no nothing else done besides obviously they're they're working on getting valleys, uh not valleys, but the Tropicana down. Yeah, they just closed it. But that's and it. you're trying to and you're saying that you're trying to play in Las Vegas in a brand new construction, in brand new construction by 2028, maybe. Oh, if we need to uh extend for 2028. You know what? I don't think the Oakland A's and John Fisher have any intentions of moving to Las Vegas. I don't think the A's want them there. First off, if John Fisher wanted to even possibly try uh, to, to get some good faith with people in Las Vegas, if he, hey, if playing in, in, a, in a AAA ballpark is no big deal, then move to Summerlin, where your AAA affiliate, the Las Vegas Aviators, literally play, where you literally built a whole new stadium. It's a gorgeous ballpark, by the way. Gorgeous ballpark. Why don't you play there? Oh, God, can't forget the $67 million a year that you make from NBC California, right? NBC Sports California. No, God forbid the billionaire is not going to forego that money. Understood, okay? I get it. I'm telling you, he has no intentions of playing in Las Vegas. This is absolutely setting up for uh, John Fisher getting out of, of the A's and selling and, and setting up a fucking bidding war. Uh, for yeah. for Sacramento, uh, Salt Lake City, Nashville, I think is going to get their own expansion. And Portland too. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely one. Yeah. It's one thousand percent setting up for. I don't think they're going to. Why would the Why would the after the success of the Aces, after the success of the Golden Knights, why would you want to bring a cancer like the Oakland Athletics with their current leadership? Why would you want to bring that into your city that you already have? You have a proven track record. This is we are a viable sports city. They suck with respect. Who the fuck is going to want to come watch the A's in Vegas? And I'm going to say, and, and, and yeah, and Josh, that that is part of the reason, because the mayor, she's offering them, like you said, somewhere else. She's on. She doesn't want them on the trip, but that's an unincorporated place. But also for John Fisher, if he goes to the strip, He's gonna have to pay for the bulk of that stadium, and he Correct. doesn't want to do that. Well, so actually, what's today? 
today is the eighth. eighth. So tomorrow, again, I follow Nevada politics. Tomorrow, the Nevada Supreme Court is hearing a referendum from a super PAC called Schools for Stadiums. And at, during that referendum, because keep in mind, I mean, keep in mind, um, last year, uh, they were they they got there. They went to court. Schools for Stadiums, Super PAC did. Uh, this, the judge rejected it. He said, oh, you didn't like explain why, um, you know, you should get to vote on this issue. So he rejected it. Well, they took it to the Supreme Court. And now the Supreme Court is going to hear if people in Nevada should get to vote on it in November. That would be a death sentence because it's not going to get approved. Yeah. It's, it's not going to like, He and got cooked by the fact. It's fucking personal nightmare. And that's why I say that if if it does, depending on how this Supreme Court thing goes tomorrow, because if they if it gets approved and that that the, at the hearing they're like, oh, they can go ahead with the referendum. The group now has until like June to compile a hundred thousand signatures to get it on uh, as a referendum to get it on uh, the ballot in November. We already saw people aren't trying to pay for billionaires fucking playthings anymore, man. Yeah, and that and that's that's something to look out. For not only in baseball but the entire sports landscape, we saw it in Kansas City. Yeah, these billion-dollar valuations. Um, people are people are smarter now, just flat out. And it's like, yeah. no, we're not going to raise taxes, and then we get stuck with the stadium because they've seen the results. They've seen the cities that promise more jobs, promise more money, and then you turn around and the city, the city stuck with its four hundred million dollar bill. And Nevada has been Chicago too many times by yeah. their own politicians. It happened when they passed marijuana, when they legalized marijuana and said it was going to the schools and it has not gone to schools. It's literally fu been funneled right back into the stadiums and the infrastructure surrounding the stadiums that the owners of the stadiums were supposed to pay for. It's yeah. They, they've like, been burned too many times. Yeah. Sh some say Chicago is still playing for Comiskey park. Like, and that opened in nine, like 94, 96 or something like that, but they're still paying that off. Like, it's a joke, and it's a joke that they've been able to get away with it for so long. But I think now it's a great thing that you have fans who are smart enough to realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're not going to try to guilt trip us into this when you have all of this money where you can do it yourself. Yep. Go get your billionaire fucking buddies together. I know y'all be sitting on yachts and shit, just just yakking it up. Go, go, go. Listen, if it's such a good investment and it's so lucrative, right, for the... If yes. it's so financially lucrative, then you fucking pay for it. Oh, yep. well, we're bringing jobs. Well, Oakland, keep in mind, a lot of people are going to be getting laid off if and when y'all do relocate. So what do you mean? Yep. What do you mean? You're creating jobs and then killing jobs. And it's also, we've already seen the impacts of, of, of stadiums. They would they, That's already been a study that we've done. That's the economic. It doesn't make that much money. At all. It doesn't. It doesn't make that much money for the city. It only makes money for the team. And shout out to Jason Burke. Jason Burke from Sports Illustrated. He's the one who wrote the article. Because a new stadium will probably add over a billion dollars in value to the A's. But you got to think, if Fisher has to take that billion dollars out of his pocket, he's not making a profit. So right. that's why he's hesitant to do it. And you saw when they agreed, when the league agreed to let him move the team to Vegas, they also told him, oh, by the way, if you sell any part of this team, we're going to tax the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. So again, they're, they're hitting him in his pocket. So now he's really at a really, you know, a fork in the road. Like, how are we going to do this? Cause everything he was trying to do is just, it's not going to work. I would not be surprised if that team is for sale by Christmas time. Yeah. Would in and they're going to stay in after, Oakland after the end of the season. Once the dust is kind of settled, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be terribly surprised. Not at all. Yeah. And, it, and if the PR keeps, if, if the PR keeps up at this rate, I wouldn't be surprised if the rest of the owners turned around and told him, hey, bro, no, like you're not about to leave the seventh largest market to go somewhere else. And you don't even have shit set up again. And like uh, what I don't understand is and maybe, uh, you know, we've already kind of been talking maybe slight politics. It's so it's so like the Bay Area to fuck Oakland. It's so yep. unbelievably on brand. And I don't mean just baseball. It's so on brand to fuck the people of Oakland. And we can get into the, the nitty gritty behind, you know, all that. But like the Warriors left. You could have literally built the stadium, fucking demolish the goddamn Coliseum and built the shit there. But now mm -hmm. San Jose has the Sharks. So you got that part of the Bay covered. You got the Giants up there. The, war the, the Warriors are up there. They got NBA and, and they got baseball up there. And Oakland gets what? They done. Yeah, that's, it's the fucking, that's trash. 
That's trash. Yeah. Fuck John Fisher. Sad Fuck Ron Manfred too. Just I can't say that, but I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was talking a lot about um, how I would be surprised um, about if they sold the team. Moving on to more surprises. Um, I, again, we're only 10 games into the season, so I can't get too crazy. Um, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, which teams have have surprised. Oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize that the, the Dodgers. No, no, no. I'm not talking about, you know, the people we already know were going to be good. I have a couple of teams, just one in both categories, that have surprised me and disappointed me. And I'm again, I'm not talking about the obvious usual suspects, okay? Uh, we already knew the White Sox were trash guys. That doesn't shock anybody. Um, but for me, the biggest surprise and probably the most fun story uh, are the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, that yeah. has been by far the biggest surprise of the season. They have taken two L's this season, uh, one to Washington, which, you know, sometimes those happen. Um, and then one to Baltimore, which that, again, there was never a point in that loss to Baltimore where they weren't still in it. Um, so I know nothing is, nothing is won in April, but, uh, you know, it's really nice to see that city, such a gorgeous ballpark, see them having yeah. a good time. They're eight and two right now plus 18 run differential. Um, they're currently, again, small sample size. Uh, their leadoff hitters are ranked fourth in OBP, fifth in OPS, and sixth in slugging lead-wide. So guys are getting on base. They're doing what they got to do, uh, getting some some balls to bats, and they're having fun in uh, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. No, I with, with, with it being so early, I couldn't do teams. I did players, even though, like no, I said, no, 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 no. hella no. early. Because I got, I got some surprise. sleeping too. Tyler O'Neill, yeah. where the fuck did yeah. that come from? Yeah, but my su my surprise guy more than anybody, it's been Jordan Hicks. Like, cause for years we've been waiting on him to find the well. You know, he had to get healthy first. He had uh, Tommy John forearm injuries, things like that. But he was a reliever, and the plan for the Cardinals all along was to stretch him mm -hmm. out and eventually make him a starting pitcher. Mm -hmm. uh, he went over to Toronto. Uh, the Cardinals pretty much gave up on him at the break last year. Went up to Toronto, had a solid, solid uh, second half of the year. But this year he signed with the Giants and he's been a starter primarily. And his first start, he went five innings, struck out five. Uh, but then in his second start, this was the one that was like, OK, th this is what we're looking for from Jordan. For him to go seven strong innings, he threw 91 pitches. And I think it was pitch 86, 87, 88. He went 99, 97. 98. So as the game was going on, he was still, he still had his best stuff with him. And that's something you want to see with somebody that's trying to develop and start to really work on that stamina, because that's what he said. That was the primary thing he worked on this off season. So my biggest surprise is I would say Jordan Higgs. And now, I mean, good for him. See, actually speaking of season start tonight, Lake Snell getting his first start for the giants. That's not a bad person to have in your, uh, in your clubhouse with you, helping you out. So Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's a that's a good call. Mine, as far as surprise players, Tyler O'Neill, crazy. I saw some of the power when I went to that exhibition game uh, against the Red Sox uh, or get the Red Sox Rangers. What was that? Two weeks ago, and I said, "Oh, yeah. Ty Tyler O'Neill back." Man, crazy. That, I actually, I got another one. It's, I, I'm I've been on my pitches lately, but uh, from from my bum ass White Sox, Gary Crochet. Um, this is a guy who yeah, hadn't started. I knew a, you were he, he hadn't started a game since 2019. Uh, since his arm injury, we hadn't seen him touch uh, high 90s. Uh, he's hit six. He's hit uh, triple digits a couple times. He's been in the mm -hmm. high 90s. The sweeper looks disgusting. Uh, he's actually back to the high leg kick, which I love because for some reason they had him pitching primarily from the stretch as opposed to the windup. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't understand that with his size and his power that he gets from his legs to take away his windup. But he's back doing that. And he's really hurling right now. Like, obviously, Sneaky we ain't going to win shit. Comeback player of the year? I, I think he will have a chance because I think he is the Eric, only reason Eric to Hall ever watch that game. Doesn't decide to, like, end up having a crazy season and, and end up being a fucking all-star this year. I think it's possible. Yeah. But that's a guy. Like, I think I, there's no other reason to watch the White Sox besides Facts. Garrett. That's it. Facts. Um, and we will slander the Chicago White Sox accordingly in the local hour. So definitely make sure uh, that y'all tap in for Absolutely. that. However, I do want to get to my biggest disappointment 
um, so far because we did talk about it. And I think I can't remember if it was you that said that this team right here was going to, to be sneaky good. And I, it, I, it, I've yet to see it. The Toronto Blue Jays, what the f- are they doing? I know that was Mike. Toronto Blue Jays have awesome. like no offense. No, that, was, that was our Puerto Rican brother. Oh, uh, that Mike. was that Mikey? Oh, yeah. yeah. I wish I, he was here so I could slander him personally. Um, <laughs> they have been absolutely atrocious. Uh, they have a four and six record right now, a negative 17 run differential. Uh, and I'm not sure how many of you know out there, they were a part of that uh, no hitter um, by Ronel Blanco, the first no hitter of the Major League Baseball season in 2024. Um, super fucking embarrassing. The team, and I'm looking at their stats right now. And like, listen, you would think in a team that has Vlad Guerrero Jr., Kevin Biggio, Bo Bichette, and the, that they would, it's fucking ugly over there. No one in the lineup is batting above 240. That's fucking atrocious. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a fucking dumpster fire over there. I, no. I, I don't mean I don't mean to be disrespectful, <laughs> but and I did say it before the season started when we talked about managers on the hot seat, the hot seat. John Schneider, bud, if you don't fix it by May, it's getting late early. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think I think if he doesn't turn the ship around um, by May, I, I think he might get fired. Yeah, I don't think not, he's going to make it to the summer break. It's it's going to get ugly up there, especially because they they just renovated. Uh, they spent a lot of money renovating the yes, Rogers Center. Did. If you get a chance, go to Toronto. It it is a f- amazing I've ballpark. Never actually, I've never it, been it, it, you never. And you live in Arizona. Yeah. That's crazy. That's but no. Sad. Mexico's right, never been like on, like on my my like list of places to go. I would like to go to yeah. Canada, but I've just never left the country. And I was like, is my first place out of the country really going to be fucking Canada? No offense. Hey, to my, no. Oh, Canada. Love what you I mean, a like, great national anthem. Love that song. Oh, good. But Bye. no. Uh <laughs> that's a quick trip and it's a it's a great ballpark. Mm-hmm. But um my disappointment, uh, I can I can actually put these two together because um my disappointed players are on the same team. It's the Miami Marlins. They are fucking terrible. They are one and nine. They are the, I think they are bottom two offense right now. One, shout out to that one win though. And I'm pretty sure they also have like a, their, their, their run differentials like the same as the fucking white. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Uh, I want to say uh, everybody's favorite talkative uh, bohemian uh, jazz Chisholm is batting a rousing two Oh six right now. So uh, you got to love that. I don't know what the fuck Tim Anderson is doing. I'm not even going to talk about bro no more. I, I'm going to just pray for him. Uh, well, hopefully that, he bounces you know, back. But... You, got, you got all these women zapping your powers, you know. He, I, he, let that he, ain't up. He, ain't been, he ain't been the same since King Von died. Like, like his powers went with him. Like, it, it, it's a wrap. Like, he's terrible. But, uh, right. yeah, the Miami Marlins. Shout out to Jake Berger, though. Jake Berger, uh, that was a terrible trade by the Chicago White Sox because you had him on team control. He's continued to do nothing but hit. Um, and so, yeah, the Miami Marlins, because I did think they were going to, they had an opportunity to compete with the Phillies for that wild card spot. Cause we know how the NL East is. And with the Mets being out of it, I really thought Miami had an opportunity to take advantage of that. But right now they look, they look lost. And for those who don't know, uh, the Miami Marlins did void Skip Schubacher's, um, the manager of the Marlins. They did void his, uh, his option for 2025. Uh, which is crazy. Like you're telling someone in advance that you're going yeah, to fire yeah. them. But they fuck That's hot. They crazy. set the seat on fire. Like they they That's set the whole seat on fire. Seat. Like they threw him right in with gasoline draws. It's crazy. It, I, poor guy. Tough scene. Um, justice for Kim Ang. Honestly, this is Kim Ang's revenge right here. Facts. Big facts. That is Kim facts. They did her dirty. The curse of Ang. I will. That's stamp it. <laughs> And uh, yeah, man, uh, that's another edition of the Hot Corner. Uh, this will be a podcast within the next couple of weeks. Check that out on the Barber's Chin Network. You basically just get what you saw, but in a, in a larger format where you can get, to, get into all the nitty gritty weekly uh, happenings in the MLB. And yes, you're right, Dante. Uh, favorite talk of Bahamian. That nigga has been on every podcast. Oh, my God, bro. And there should be a rule. If you're batting under the Mendoza line, you should not be in front of a microphone. <laughs> at all. 
100 <laughs> percent man but uh that is going to be the end of today's episode went a little bit a little bit over a little over time today because we ain't did nothing in about two weeks but we are about to take care of the local hour right now it will be the four of us uh we're going to be giving our opinions on the white Sox and cubs first two weeks of the season uh definitely this will be courtney's uh local hour debut and then, of course, uh, Dante, not Dante, but Bang will be joining us in the local hour, too. We're going to be talking about this is a conversation is probably like a week or two old. But like I said, we ain't been on the air in two weeks. We're going to talk about uh, the is Chicago ready for things that comes with the eccentric Caleb Williams conversation. You know, a lot of people Don't have fun with that. Yeah, you yeah, she, would be, <laughs> she, would, she would be going before we get to that part. She just put a Caleb Williams band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm on a, I'm on a stop now. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, all signs pointing to the Bears keeping the ninth pick. What are they going to do with that? Roma Dunze just had his top 30 visit at so uh, not so visit, Hallis Hall this past week. Also going to talk about Ryan Pohl is going to like this press run the last couple of weeks. What did you take from that? Much different than past uh, Bears general manager. Really pa- different than Chicago general managers in general. And then we'll talk about Billy Donovan possibly leaving the, leaving the Bulls to go to Kentucky. Who could his replacement be, man? So, Get all that on patreon.com backslash Barbara's Chat Network, man. Uh, subscribe to the five dollar feed if you want, just I'm not gonna hold you, or a ten dollar for all of them, man. And also, we're gonna have like an actual me and Dante got a special Patreon project, it's dropping real soon. Very excited about this. We will have news of that next week. Wow, that's oh, crazy. Wow. How do I not even know about it? Well, it, well I, I don't think nobody really knows like stuff us too. Like that's why I was just that's about why. to say we haven't we haven't talked you to anyone on the metaphorical really. payroll, but I don't know what the fuck's <laughs> going on. That's wild. We we will inform you as soon as we get, get done with this. All right, but all right, all right. Look out for that. That's gonna be real special. Uh we're gonna announce that next week. So it's like you know, we it's gonna be a lot of summer post NBA content for y'all. On uh, the Barbershare Network, man. So, of course, y'all can follow Courtney at 1-800-CALLABRO. You can follow Dante at October Zone Tay. Follow J.R. Bang at J.R. Bang on all social media platforms. Follow me at Barbershare Scott. Follow the Barbershare Network at Barbershare Net. On Twitter and Instagram, follow h Media at h Media TV on Twitter and at h Media on Instagram. And, of course, get in tune with our sponsors, Pillars. PillarsClub.co. Visit Pillars underscore club on Instagram or visit any of their three locations in the Chicagoland area. There's one in the West Loop, there's one in Chicago Ridge Mall, and there's one in Orland Park Mall. Get in tune with that. Uh, the homie Mike will be back on Friday for uh, Cousin Dan Friday. Who knows what Dan wants to talk about? We ain't spoke to him like a month. So, you oh, need- shit. <laughs> who knows what's on he his mind? Reading J. Cole's album from his fucking <laughs> album music. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, who knows we're going to talk about it on Friday. So get in tune with that. Uh, we got to knock, knock out the local out, man. So we're going to holler at y'all.